Ames kickoff sails out of the back of the end zone, so UT will start this drive from their own 20-yard line. Texas wearing their home uniforms, the burnt orange tops, white pants, and that very distinguished helmet with the longhorn symbol on top. Kansas State in their road, whites with silver trousers. UT will line up like this. Leonard Davis at 367 pounds. The left tackle, Roger Ray, so the left guard, he's an All-American. Matt Anderson is the center. Antoine Kirk Hughes, the right guard. The right tackle is Corey Kwai. And it is uh, tight end Mike Jones. Major Applewhite, the quarterback, with a staggered set behind him. They now put Hodges Mitchell in motion to the near side. Long count. Applewhite back. Throws it out to flat. Little screen of Mitchell who catches the ball and goes down behind the line of scrimmage to the 19. A loss of a yard. Travis Litton there to make the tackle. The running backs will be Ricky Brown is a dynamite blocking fullback and Hodges Mitchell. The wideouts are Kwame Cavill. He's a dandy. Leads the Big 12 in receiving and Ryan Nunez, a former Colorado Buffalo who transferred back to his hometown of Austin, Texas. K-State along the front line will be Monty Beisel and Darren Howard at the ends. Mario Fatafei and Cliff Holloman at the tackles. The linebacker Court, Travis Litton, Ben Lieber, and Mark Simino. Simino, the leading tackler on the team. Second and 11 for the 19. One back, Mitchell. Applewhite hands it off to Mitchell. Has running room off the right side. Gets to the 30 and then cracked out at the 38 yard line. But it's a 19 yard pickup and a first down for the Horns. It was John McGraw making the tackle for Kansas State as they really blasted it off the right side for a UT first down. K-State strong safety, Jared Cooper, Lamar Chapman, the free safety, Jeremetrius Butler and Dyshot Carter are the corners. Nice rushing play that time, stand by the Horns. Yeah, the play was designed to go left, but Hodges Mitchell saw that K-State had committed so far that way. He just cut back, went to the right side, and picked up a first down. First and 10 now from the 38 for the Horns. Applewhite changing to play at the line of scrimmage. Still five on the play clock. Has twins to the far side. One wide receiver to the near side. Back to throw is Applewhite on first down. Has time. Throws it over the middle. Pass sails incomplete. Might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage, but really wasn't close to any Longhorn that time. It'll be second down and 10. So the two pass plays have worked very well for Kansas State's defense. The running play, though, by Hodges that went for 19 yards was the one big play on the drive so far. Well, the second play of the game, K-State went to five defensive backs. Now they've gone to six defensive backs to get ready for this ball play. Deron Tyler will come in as a cornerback, and they also have John McGraw in the ball game. So K-State is playing tight man-to-man -man with a lot of defensive backs so far. And Texas, they love to throw the screen pass to the wide receivers. They did on first down. K-State did a great job of stopping the play. Two wide outs again in the pattern of the far shot on second and 10. Play clock at 2, 1. Applewhite, uh, I think he did get it off in time. Goes back to pass. Continues. He throws. Picked off by Kansas State's Lamar Chapman. 40. Chapman, 35, 30. Gets ankle tackled by Hodges Mitchell at the 22-yard line. Kansas Kansas State intercepts Major Applewhite. It's 12 straight games now for Kansas State with an interception and only Major's second INT of the year. And the Wildcats have terrific field position at the UT 23. The second interception for Lamar Chapman also. He did a great job from the free safety of jumping in front of an in route. Texas loved to throw in routes. That means you go down about 15 yards and square in. Kwame Cavill, the wide receiver, was coming that way. But Chapman cut in front of him, intercepted a pass, did a great job of returning the football right up the middle and took it all the way down to the Texas 23-yard line. Adam Hill makes his first start at quarterback for Kansas State. They split Frank Murphy out to the near side. John Olazatich, the one back in the backfield. Helm, back to throw, sets, looks, throws, ball batted out at the line of scrimmage by Cedric Woodard, who is the right, left end. And Woodard, a former defensive tackle, slides out to the end and makes a play that time on him. Kansas State on the offensive line. Damian McIntosh, left tackle, Ian Moses, the left guard. Randall Cummins, the center. Andy Eby, the right guard. The right tackle, Milford Stevenson. Shad Meyer, the tight end. Adam Hill making his first start. 64% completion percentage. Has yet to throw a touchdown pass as a Wildcat quarterback. John Olazitich back after missing two games with a concussion. Frank Murphy, the one back, or two backs behind Helm. They hand it off to Murphy. Murphy gets hit, no gain. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Irvis Hill, the corner, made the tackle that time for Texas. Aaron Humphrey and Cedric Woodard are the ends. Casey Hampton and Sean Rogers, the tackles. The linebacking court, Everett Rawls, DeAndre Lewis, and Aaron Babino. The free safety is Greg Brown. The strong safety, Lee Jackson, Ahmad Brooks, and Joe Walker are the corners, although it looks like Irvis Hill is in there for Walker at the other corner. Stand third and long for the Cats. Yeah, K-State ran a sweep right into a corner blitz. It was a good defensive call by Carl Reese and stopped the Wildcats right at the line of scrimmage. And Adam Helm has to call a timeout. Play clock was down to four. Kansas State will have third and long from just inside the Texas 24. Lamar Chapman's 
Interception is second of the season. Fourth of his career has set Kansas State up in with great field position here. But the Cats have been unable to stand to do anything on first and second down, now facing third and long. Texas has been great this year on third down, holding their opponents down on third down. And K-State struggled some on third down also. It's the, th the thing that they like to improve on. They've only converted 30% of their third down conversions, and it's hard to do it in this situation. Texas will be bringing a blitz, make no doubt about it, in this third and 10 situation. Adam Helm under center, staggered set, twins to the far side on third and 10. Helm rolls the pocket to the far side, guns the ball downfield, pass is caught near the first down stick. It's going to be a first down for Kansas State. It's caught by Aaron Lockett on the far side for the Wildcats, an 11 yard pickup. Greg Brown made the tackle that time. Might have got a generous spot for Kansas State, but a nice throw by Adam Helm, hooking up with Aaron Lockett. But hand it to John O'Lazicic, the player who sat out the game last week. The fullback had to block the blitzing cornerback. The guy came off the slot. He was right in front of Aaron Lockett. He came on the blitz. K-State was on a roll, but the block was made by the K-State fullback, allowing Adam Helm to throw the pass for a completion. First and 10 from the 12. K-State now moving Murphy out to the wide side. Lazatic, the one back behind Helm. Movement all across the line. Twins to the near side. Helm hands it off to Lazatic. Picks his way inside the 10 down to the 9-yard line. Again, the 3 on first down. It'll be second down and 7. After completing the big third down pass, now you want 7 out of this drive, not just 3. Absolutely. Absolutely, but you saw a great job done on that last play, Greg. You go back to it. Everyone made their play. The line did a good job of blocking. Adam Helm was on the roll, but there was a blitz coming right in his face, and John Olazetich did a great job of knocking down the blitzer. Helm threw a nice pass, and Aaron Lockett, only a sophomore, does a veteran thing, gets past the first down marker to make the catch. Second down and seven from the Texas nine. Staggered set, they pitch it back to Murphy, sweep to the near side. Murphy cuts up inside to the five. Frank down to the three-yard line and close to a first down. It'll be third and one for Kansas State. Everett Rawls made the tackle. Good patient run that time by Frank Murphy. Let's go to Greg Akagi. One thing about the crowd noise, it is extremely loud down here, but there's one difference. There used to be a track down here at Darrell Royal the Memorial Stadium. There isn't anymore, so their north end zone seats are quite a bit away from the end zone, so that noise doesn't carry, unlike if you're in KSU Stadium, where you're right on top of the crowd right there in the closed end of the uh, uh, of the field there at KSU Stadium as opposed here at Memorial Stadium here in Austin. Yep, good point, Greg. KSU now with third and one from the UT3. They break the huddle. They'll be in an eye formation. Five of the play clock for Kansas State. Third and one from the horn three. They turn, hand it off to Murphy. Left side gets stuffed at the five. He'll lose a yard on the play. Maybe two yards on the play. So it'll be fourth down and three from the five and a decision for Bill Snyder on whether to go for it here or to kick for three points. It was Lee Jackson, the strong safety, who fired through to make the tackle, and here comes the field goal unit. Texas is going to play with a tight man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, and their safeties are going to fill on the run very quickly. That time they were like linebackers in a short yardage situation. A very strong player, Lee Jackson, did a great job of coming up and stopping the Wildcats, putting them in this field goal position. This will be a 22-yard field goal attempt. Jamie Ream has never attempted a field goal in his K-State career from this distance. It's just a little more than a PAT to ball in the near half. They snap it down, a high snap. They get it down. Reams kick is up and good. 3-0. K-State takes the early lead, taking advantage of the interception. Green with the approach and the kick. Uh, end over end kick headed toward the about two yards deep. It's going to be taken by Jones, who's coming out to the 10. Jones to the 15. K-State hits him. Terrence Newman knocks him down to the 19-yard line. Good tackle by the redshirt freshman from Salina. And Texas will take over for their second possession with the ball at the 19. Stand very important for the Cats to at least get points on that drive. Would have been nice for seven, but they do at least convert after the turnover. Well, after the turnover, you'd have to say both teams are fairly happy. The Wildcats are glad they got some points, and Texas obviously is saying, good job defense, you're backed up to start the game, way to hold them to a field goal. They'll actually mark this football right at the 20 for Texas. Wide receivers left and right, eye formation behind Major Applewood on first and 10. Hand it off to Ricky Brown, nowhere to go. Stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Kansas State just makes a big pile there at the 20, and he's knocked down there, Monty Beisel. And Jared Cooper off the pile for the Wildcats, but also that defensive front did a nice job of just standing up those big offensive linemen of UT. And they've really played well up there. Mario Fadafe was the guy who made the big plays in the second half against Iowa State that really started the K-State comeback from a defensive perspective. So far in this game, Greg, K-State's playing tight man-to-man -man on the outside. It looks a lot like K-State's defense the last couple of years. Second and 10, 9.40 left first quarter, 3-0 Wildcats. Kwame Cavill in motion. Staggered set, Major Applewhite hands it off to Hodges. Mitchell goes down. No gain in the play as Kansas State wraps him up and knocks him down to Vane Robinson over there to make the hit for Kansas State. It will be third down and 10 now for 
Texas with the ball at their own 20 yard line. Well, that's what K-State's got to do. They've got to stop the run on first and second down and put Texas in situations where it's third and long. Major Applewhite's a very effective quarterback. He may hit you on some of these, but the odds are sure in your favor if he's throwing on a third and 10 rather than being able to throw on third and short. Applewhite will be in a shotgun. Four wideouts in the pattern. Well, Applewhite with the long count. There's movement on the line. Texas jumps. The left tackle moved for UT. That'll cost them five yards. Next year. Darren Howard now is into the defensive tackle. Chris Johnson at the right end. Back to throw his major on third and 15. Gets hit. Fumbles the football. Kansas State has the ball at the nine yard line. Chris Johnson has the football. Monty Beisel came through and chopped the arm of Apple White in the casket. Their second turnover and take over at the Texas nine yard line. One thing Major Apple White will do is he will sit in the pocket and look downfield. He has great concentration downfield. He doesn't look at the defenders around him. He has confidence in his line. But this time he did not see Monty Beisel. His concentration was such that Monty Beisel came right up to him and just hit the football away. Even though he's coming on the front side, the left defensive end, Monty Beisel knocks it down and circling around from the right defensive end, Chris Johnson was there to jump on the football for the Wildcats. Kansas State has it first and goal to UT9. I think Milford Stevenson's in there for Kansas State along the offensive line. Murphy the one back behind Helm. They turn handed off to Frank. It's piled up. He'll lose a yard back to the 10. UT is burying the Wildcats up front right now. That big defensive line is doing a number on the Cats offensive line. DeAndre Lewis, the middle linebacker, fires in there. Let's go down to Greg Akagi. Yeah, K-State's got a new, basically a new offensive line. Milford Stevenson is in at left tackle. John Robertson has moved from right tackle to right guard. And Thomas Barnett, after missing last week's game, he's back in at right tackle. Musical chairs up there, Stan. Yes, it is, but we know Kansas State has seven offensive linemen. They're pretty equal. They're trying to find the combination. We expect to see some switches today. Second and goal from the 11. Staggered set behind Adam Helm. Wide receivers left and right. They turn. They pitch it off to Frank Murphy. Needs a block in a corner. Gets one from John Elazitich. Lowers his shoulder and goes out of bounds at about the seven. He'll gain four, but it'll be third and goal now for Kansas State with a ball at the seven-yard line. Ahmad Brooks made the tackle for UT. Kansas State, boy, would really love to get seven here. You've had two golden opportunities to score touchdowns. It'll be tough now. Third Third and goal from the seven. And you can really see the difference in this Texas defense. It's not the defense that gives up a lot of yards. This one is a defense that ranks 15th in the nation. They are very, very tough. And the Wildcats here have a third down inside the 10-yard line, trying to penetrate that end zone for the first time this game. Adam Helm will have an eye formation. Lazatich and Murphy behind him. Morgan to the far side. They run the option. Helm keeps it, steps inside, gets down to the six, maybe the five, and that's it. And K-State will have to settle for three more here as Adam Helm runs the option to the near side. And then Jamie Ream and the field goal unit tried onto the field. And this field goal will be almost exact same spot. It's going to be the five-yard line on the left hash, almost the same exact place they kicked the first field goal from. Good defense by the Texas Longhorns to hold Kansas State. Two times they've been put on the field with their backs to the wall. K-State had great field position, and they've held the Wildcats to field goal tries. The first one was 22 yards. This will be 23 yards, again on the near hash for Jamie Ream. Neil Gosh to snap it. Mike Ronzik to hold. They snap it back. Good snap. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 6-0 Wildcats with 8 7 5 to go in the first quarter. Ream has it teed up at the 35. Jones and Ike back deep. A low end over end kick, but it drives Jones deep into the end zone, and he'll go to an E, and so the Horns will have it at their own 20-yard line for the third straight time. Major will be on his center, one back behind him. Twins to the near side. One wide receiver in the pattern to the far side. Mitchell, the one back behind Major. Play action fake. Back to throw. Stepped up in the pocket. Has room to run. Major to the 25, and Simino plants him right there. Five-yard pickup on the play, but Casey with good rush upfield and forcing Major to run. He's not a great scrambler, not a great athlete, but he can pick up minimal yardage like he did that time with a five-yard gain. He's good in the pocket. He can move around and keep himself alive and throw the football like a Dan Marino or something like that. But what's interesting is Major usually doesn't run that quickly. I think the sack and the fumble had a big effect on him. He's not going to stand in the pocket very long. If he feels any pressure, he's going to start moving upfield. It's better to have Major Applewhite running the football than throwing it from the K-State perspective. Second and five. Staggered set behind Applewhite. Wide receivers left and right on second and five from their own 25. Turns. Fakes a handoff. Back to throw. Throws the ball downfield and the pass is caught by Ricky Brown who has a first down up to the 36 yard line. Brown made a nice catch at about the 28. Fingertip type catch and then he drug a couple of Wildcat defenders. 
across the 35 and a pickup of 11 on the play. Jeremetrius Butler finally knocked him to the ground, but a nice play by Brown to pull that ball in. Yeah, it was a bootleg pass. K-State did have some pressure up on Major Applewhite, and the ball is slightly overthrown, but Ricky Brown is a very good pass-receiving fullback. He's the guy who had did all the blocking last year, the yeoman's job for Ricky Williams. This year he's getting the football a little bit more, especially in the passing game. Brown's fourth catch of the year. Kwame Cavill leads his team with 37, and Ryan Nunez has 32. And a timeout taken by Kansas State with 5.53 to go in the first quarter. First and 10 for the Horns. Apple White will be in a shotgun. Four wideouts in the pattern. 6 0 catch of the lead. Apple White takes a snap. Steps up. Looks, gets rushed. Eludes a couple of cats. Now he's going to tuck it and go. Apple White to the 40, dives forward to the 43 yard line. Pickup of seven on the play. Mark Simino makes a tackle, but again, pretty good heat. Darren Howard and Monty Beisel applying the pressure on Apple White, forcing him to tuck it and go. It'll be second and short now for UT. Major Applewhite stays in the pocket, and the K-State rush is really coming from the outside. And the coverage is very good downfield. Major has room to run upfield, but the important thing is he didn't have any receivers to throw to. Mark Simino, the only linebacker on the field for the Wildcats right now, did a great job of blowing up a receiver trying to cross over the middle. Four wideouts in the pattern, three to the far side. Applewhite on a shotgun on second and three. Long count, Major takes it, hands off out of it to Hodges Mitchell. Hodges gets upfield, loses his shoe. Cooper brings him down. He does pick up the first down, though, to the 47. A gain of four in the play. And so the UT will move the chains. That's their third first down. If you like to see exciting offense and defense, you're at the right place. We know Texas will do some great things on defense and K-State on offense. But I tell you what, right now, it's a chess match out there. Second and three. Do you expect K-State to send a safety blitz and blitz their only linebacker? No, but they do it. The Wildcats are coming everywhere and they make a nice play but Texas needing only a couple yards gets the first down so we are going to see a chess match with teams taking chances in this ball game because they respect their opponent so much first and ten for the 48 for UT a staggered set wide receivers left and right major turns back to throw sets pumps looks throws the ball downfield looking for Kwame Cavill makes a catch inside the 20 knocked out of bounds by Dyshawn Carter at the 14 yard line that time they threw it right over the top of Carter. Carter saying Kwame Cavill shoved him off. No flag, though. 38-yard pickup on the play for Texas. They have it now at the Cat 14. There's a straight drop back pass. Man to man on the outside. Kwame Cavill is going to do a stop and then a go. K-State's Dyshot Carter had good coverage, but the ball's thrown so perfectly by Major Applewhite. Just to the outside. Dyshot Carter's there, but this great speedster, Kwame Cavill, who averages 13 yards per reception, goes deep downfield. He's the player who can do that for the University of Texas, and he does it early in this ball game. 38th catch of the year for Cavill. Again, we mentioned he leads the Big 12 in receiving. First and 10 for UT at the 14-yard line of Kansas State. Major turns, play action fake, sets, looks, holds, throws the ball to flat man, wide open, pass caught, touchdown Texas. Pulled in by Chris Smith, the tight end. That's his second touchdown catch of the season, and this game is tied at six as UT just goes 80 yards. And Chris Smith, a guy who played defensive end the last two years and has converted to tight end, catches his second touchdown pass of the season, and Texas has tied the game, but it looks like there is a penalty, probably celebration. That's 15 yards. It means it's going to be an extra point from long distance, and there's a chance here that Texas could miss this extra point and the game still be tied. A real mistake by the Longhorns. They have a very good place kicker, though, in Chris Stockton who last year booted two game-winning field goals. This is going to, Essence, going to be a 35-yard PAT. We saw that in the opener when, or the second game against UTEP when Travis Brown was placed kicking for Kansas State. Ryan Long to hold, Hunter McWilliams to snap it back. The snap back, the kick by Stockton is up, and the kick is good. 7-6, Texas has the lead. 4.50 left to go first quarter. Stockton with the approach, and a short kick into the win. One of the up men, Quincy Morgan, takes it at the 20. Morgan at the 25, spins away from a defender, goes down at about the 30-yard line. So that's where Kansas State will take over before we continue on. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Wildcats Sports Network. Greg Sharp, Stan Weber, Ed O'Donnell, Greg Akagi, and Mike Ryan back at Texas's Memorial Stadium in Austin. 
It is 7-6. Texas with the lead. An impressive drive. Stand by UT after falling behind 6-0. You see how dangerous Major Applewhite is, how accurate he is, and those were first down passes, Greg. It wasn't third and long. They decided to throw the football on first down, and it worked very well. Kansas State goes with five wideouts in the pattern. Helm is in a shotgun. Takes a snap. Looks. Throws. Pass is in and out of the hands of George Williams. It'll be second down and 10 for Kansas State. Helm had to get rid of it quick because of a pass rush by UT, but had his man out there, went through the hands of George Williams. When you spread that many wide receivers out, the defense has two choices. They can either drop back into coverage and almost rush no one and try to cover back there, or they can send pressure and force you to throw the ball quickly and take a chance if someone's wide open downfield. Well, Texas is always going to choose bring pressure. So Adam Helm had to throw the football real quickly. He had an open receiver. The ball just happened to go through George Williams' hands. Staggered set this time for Applewhite. Twins to the near side. They turn, they roll the pocket to the near side. Helm holds, throws the ball downfield, and sails it out of bounds. Lockett, the intended receiver, but Helm just launched it into the UT bench. It'll be third and ten now for the Cats. It'll ball at their own 30. 4-31 left first quarter, 7-6 UT. Texas does not mind if you hit them for a couple of big plays. They're going to force you to do that. What they're thinking is they don't want the quarterback to get in a rhythm. For nine straight games, they've not allowed a quarterback to complete even 50% of his passes against this defense. And you can see why. They're bringing everyone. There's receivers who are open downfield or in one-on-one -on -one coverage, but you're going to have to throw the ball accurately, and you're going to have to throw the ball quick to beat this Texas defense. Helm one of four early on in this game for K-State. will be in a shotgun with two backs in the backfield. Wide receivers set left and right. Two in the play clock. One, they snap it back to Helm. In the pocket, being rushed, gets hit, goes down at the 20. Ten-yard loss on the play, and UT again with great push up the middle. Casey Hampton, who's the leading tackler on this football team. A defensive tackle who's the leading tackler, gets a sack that time in case they'll be forced to punt. When you bring the blitz, what you do is you force one-on-one -on -one blocking across the board, and that is very tough to stop Casey Hampton. He is very quick, tenacious, in much better shape than he was last year when the Wildcats seen him, and he weighs 300 pounds. He was right there in front of Adam Helm, and when you get pressure up the middle, that's the worst kind of pressure for a quarterback. Courtney Garcia back deep for UT. It'll be Mike Ronsick punting for Kansas State. Ronsick gets it away. Good high kick by Ronsick. Garcia drifting back, pulls it in his own 30-yard line, and Garcia goes down for 32. Bryce Leibel makes a tackle for Kansas State, a very short return after a 50-yard punt by Mike Ronsick that time. The Cats are going with their sixth defensive back look here on first down. And UT pointing out everybody on the field. They have twins to the near side. One wide receiver to the far side and Hodges Mitchell. The one back behind Applewhite. Kwame Cavill in motion. They turn, run the reverse to Cavill, but K-State's there. Darren Howard and Lamar Chapman bring him down. He fumbles at the end of the play, but they blow the ball dead at the 29-yard line. It'll be a loss of two yards on the play, and it'll be second down at 12. But, boy, Darren Howard played that like a rally old pro. Well, they've seen this play enough. Remember last week, Iowa State was having a wide receiver come in motion and go around on reverse all the time, or at least faking it. Same type of play. This time, Kwame Cavill comes over there, and he sees Darren Howard. Howard gets up there, Chapman gets up there. They knocked the football loose, but the official said it was after he ruled it down with forward motion. Second and 12 now for UT. Ball at their own 29. Split backs behind Applewhite. Wide receivers left and right. They turn hand it off to Ricky Brown. Brown gets up to the 30, 35, and gets up to about the 40-yard line on a pickup of 11. It'll be third and one for Texas. It was Carter and Chapman combining on the tackle that time as K-State was rushing upfield, but a little delay action that time by UT. Wow, this is exciting, Greg. you got K-State just coming from everywhere, and you just hope that you can stop the play. From Texas' perspective, they're going, man, look at all these people coming. If we can just slip through here, we can get a lot of yardage. That time they slipped through. This is like watching a mirror. Both teams' defenses are so aggressive, it's unbelievable. Third and one for Texas. Ball at their, their own 40. Staggered set behind Applewhite. They now move. Brown in motion. They turn, hand it off to Hodges Mitchell. He cracks four, gets shoved back. It's going to be close as Mark Simino throws him down. And it'll depend on the spot here. 7-6 Texas with the lead on a hot day here in the middle of Texas. You know, the heat's a big factor out there. The Wildcats are trying to get as much water in them as they can as they pull the chain. Well, Ed was, again, Eagle Eye Ed gets it rise at about the length of the football for a first down for UT. Well, I had a sinking feeling when he was motioning first down because he's so accurate on those. Split backs behind Applewhite. Cavill in motion back toward the line of scrimmage. 
Back to throw is Applewhite. Steps up. Has time. Throws. Ball tipped and incomplete. Up out of 45 yard. I thought it was tipped. Maybe it wasn't. It was intended for Cavill. Carter on the coverage at the time. It'll be second down at 10. That had a funny spin on it that time. And I thought maybe Casey got a paw on it at the line of scrimmage. But nevertheless, it's an incompleted pass. Second and 10. Second and 10. Ball to 41. Cavill in motion. Puts twins to the far side, one wide receiver to the near side. Back to throw a little wide receiver screen to Cavill. Makes a catch, gets to the 45, and gets thrown out at midfield. Chris Johnson makes a tackle for Kansas State. It's very close to a first down. Texas loves the screen pass, Greg, to the wide receivers. If they can't run the football very well with their running back and fullback, this becomes their running game. They just throw the ball down. Now, to make it successful, your quarterback has got to throw the ball very, very accurately as they come up one inch short on the measurement there. So it's going to be third and short. But it's up to the quarterback to make that a good play. There's a lot of people running around. And if you throw the ball behind a receiver, it can be an interception, and completion. You can stop his momentum. But Major does a great Great job of hitting those wide receivers in stride. So if K-State can stop the running game, the next thing to stop is their quasi-running game, the wide receiver screen game. Third and inches, ball to Kansas State 49. Texas one of two on third down conversions so far. This one very, they don't need much here to get this one at all. And they have cracked Kansas State's territory for the second straight drive. Tight formation, split backs behind Applewhite. Long count by Major. He may be checking to another play. They can now shift to the eye. Applewhite turns, hands it off. Hodges Mitchell and leans forward and gets the first down. Spins his way down to the 46 of Kansas State. Lieber there to make the tackle for the Wildcats. Three-yard pickup, and they keep the drive alive now at the Wildcat 46-yard line, leading 7-6. We talked about audibleizing in the run game. Adam Helm last week, we really talked about how he did that. That's taking it to the next level. Quarterbacks in college, you hope, can audibleize in the passing game, but the ones who can take it to the next level and audibleize in the running game are excellent, really understand the game. And there you saw a, a shot where quarterback Major Applewhite put him in a high formation, ran a certain play, and picked up a first down. So they mark it at the Kansas State 47-yard line inside the last minute of the first quarter. An action-packed first quarter. Three wideouts in a pattern, two to the far side. Back to throw Applewhite. Has time. Has time. Sets, throws, pass. Nearly picked off by Kansas State. Or was it caught by Texas? Oh, it's caught by Ryan Nunez, who just pulled it away from Dyshot Carter at the 36. Texas has it at the cap 36. Late first quarter. Split backs. Wide receiver set left and right. They move Cavill in motion. Long count. Back to throw Applewhite. Here comes Kansas State of the blitz. Applewhite throws the ball downfield and overshoots Cavill. Jeremy Trius Butler with excellent coverage. Applewhite basically threw that football away. It'll be second and ten. Let's go down to Greg Akagi. Yeah, it looks like for Mario Fadafe, he just got the wind knocked out of him. He came out. Looks like uh, he's okay. He's standing up. Looks like there's not any problem. Just got the wind knocked out of him. That's good news, Greg. And he'll get a break here in a minute because we only have seven seconds left in the quarter. So they might be able to get him back out there pretty quick. Good throw by Applewhite. Saw it wasn't there and just kind of made sure nobody could catch that one. Yeah, he's very decisive back there, and he does a nice job adjusting to the game situation. K-State's put enough pressure on him that he isn't going to hold the ball for a long time with the Wildcats around. Split backs behind Applewhite. Wide receiver said left and right. Cavill again in motion. They turn, hand it off to Ricky Brown at the middle. Brown stutter steps his way to the 30, gets knocked down at about the 27-yard line. A gain of nine on the play, and that was the final play of the quarter. Texas leads after one period, 7-6. Slot to the near side, that's Brown. He's now back in motion. One back, Hodges Mitchell in the backfield. Applewhite to throw. Simino grabs him, he gets free. Applewhite scrambling in the near side, gets up, gets bumped out of bounds, fumbles the ball out of bounds. And I don't think he got the first down. He went out about the 27-yard line. Lamar Chapman knocked him away. Simino nearly had a sack, about seven, eight yards behind the line scrimmage but Applewhite slipped by him it's going to be fourth down and one now for UT with the ball at their at the Kansas State 27. Now Texas likes to go on fourth down a lot but right now they're sending their field goal kicker out on the field. Chris Stockton this will be a 44 yard attempt he is a perfect three for three on the year from this distance it will be Ryan Long the hold on fourth and one from the Kansas State 27 whistles blow flag flies and a delay a game on Texas well that's huge that'll back them up five yards and that'll now make it a 49 yard delay of game on the offense five yard penalty 
Still fourth down. But this becomes a tough field goal. Now, he has the ability to make these field goals. Make no mistake about it. He hit a 53-yarder last year against Rice and a 50-yarder this year against Baylor, but it's still not an easy kick. Yep, and it's on the near hash. The wind, which isn't a lot here right now, about 10 miles an hour, is at his back. They snap it down. The kick is blocked. Kansas State blocks a punt. Or blocks a kick. Jeremetrius Butler fires in there off that left side and tips the ball, blocking it for Kansas State. And the Cats will take over at their, at their own 31-yard line. That's a big play by K-State special teams. We've talked about wild things happening in the special teams for Texas, both good and bad. And we know the Wildcats can play special teams very well. That time blocking a field goal, lining up on the left side was K-State's cornerback, Jeremetrius Butler. He did a perfect job of laying out. And remember, when a kicker's kicking a long field goal, he's got a low trajectory. It takes off low. That allowed him to get the football, and K-State holds Texas without points. Staggered set. Allen out the eye back for Kansas State and first and 10 for their own 31. They pitch it back to David Allen. Needs some blocks around the corner. Allen cuts back up inside and goes nowhere. No gain. It'll be second and ten. And boy, this Texas defense running well right now, stringing out Kansas State's running plays. The total offense after the first quarter, UT had 134 yards. Kansas State only had 11 yards of offense in the first quarter. Marcus Wilkins made the tackle that time. And that's their ninth rush for the Wildcats in the ballgame. They have zero yards net rushing so far. It includes one sack in there. So K-State has not done a great job of running the football yet, but you've got to be patient. You've got to stick with the running game some to let the passing game have an opportunity. Second and ten, Helm and a shotgun. Wide receivers left and right, two backs in the backfield. They snap it back to Helm. Flags fly, but whistles blow. It looked like somebody for Texas came across and tapped Randall Cummins on the pads, but let's see if UT maybe was drawn offsides. A guy jumped for Texas, K-State moved. That means it's a dead ball foul on somebody. If Texas is in the neutral zone, it's a penalty on Texas. If he didn't go in the neutral zone, it's on K-State. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty. That'll be second and 15 for the Cats of their own 26. They'll stay with a shotgun formation. Two backs in the backfield with Helm. Wide receiver set left and right. Texas showing blitz. Back to throw is Helm. Steps up, gets hit, goes down at the 17-yard line. DeAndre Lewis was the man who shot through there from the middle linebacker spot to make the sack on Helm. It's the second sack of the game for Kansas State. And now they have third and long at their own 17. K-State was in max protect right here, there. That meant their tight end didn't go out. They just sent their two wide receivers, Quincy Morgan and Aaron Lockett, straight downfield on bombs. Hand it to the Texas cornerbacks. They had a man-to-man -man over, all over the field. But Ahmad Brooks and Irvis Hill were right with the K-State receivers. That meant there was nowhere for Helm to throw the football, and he took the sack. Those are two sophomore corners that UT has. Third down and long for Kansas State. Third and 25. Staggered set behind Helm. Turns. Rolls the pocket to the near side, looking downfield. Holds, sets, throws, ball is in and out of the hands of Lockett on the near side. Aaron was trying to keep his feet in bounds. The ball was sailing out of bounds. And so K-State left three and out. We'll have to punt the ball back to Texas. And so far, the Longhorn defense has been the story of this game, holding Kansas State twice when the Wildcats forced turnovers. And now a couple of th three and outs for K-State's offense. Well, you said it well, Greg, because K-State's defense has done a nice job in this ball game. But it's the Texas defense that has really done a good job of stopping the Wildcats. And now they force K-State for the second time in the game and a second time in a row to punt backed up. Mike Ronsick had a 50-yard punt, his first punt. Courtney Garcia's back deep. Ronsick's inside of his five. He's high snap, but he gets it. And then block, the kick is blocked. There is a flag on the play. The ball's down at about the 25-yard line as Texas has blocked three punts already this year. And they get one that time. But let's see what the flag is all about. This could be offsides on Texas, which means Kansas State could get a chance to punt again. Hal Dowden is conferring. It's a legal procedure on Texas. So notify the punt block. Thank goodness there. Every punt has been an adventure for Texas. They've had punts blocked this year, three in one game. They are one of the leading teams in the nation in punt blocks. It's always exciting when their punt or punt return teamer is on the field. Kansas State will have to be a little more protective of Ron Sick now. Ronsick now standing at his own seven-yard line. Good snap this time, and a good kick by Ronsick. Garcia is going to let it bounce. It bounces up in the air, then takes a little bit of a Kansas State bounce, and it rolls out of bounds on the far side of the field at about the 39-yard line of Texas. 12.40 to go in the first half on a hot 
day here in Austin. Temperature game time was 86 degrees. Staggered set by Major Applewhite. Kwame Cavill in motion. K-State jumping around the line. Back to throw is Applewhite. Gets hit. Loses the football. Actually throws it and it gets this fluttering away into the flat. It'll be an incompleted pass. Second down and 10. K-State hit him as soon as he let go of the football. Ben Lieber and Mario Fatafehi combined a sandwich. Major Applewhite. Well, Phil Bennett is reacting to Texas' strategy. They're throwing on first down every time because they see K-State with regular people in there and they expect K-State State to be stuffing the run and not blitzing. Well, K-State said, enough of that. We know you're passing. K-State has regular people, but they set two linebackers on the play. Ben Lieber and Mark Simino blitzed, and they got to the quarterback, knocking the football down as Major Applewhite tried to throw. Staggered set. Now they move Hodges Mitchell in motion to the far side. Twins to the near side. Applewhite on second and ten. Rolls the pocket a bit. Simino comes after him. They hit him and bring him down. A sack for Kansas State inside the 30 down at the 27-yard line. Simino and Monty Beisel combine on that sack of Major Applewhite. It'll be third and long, third and 20 to be exact for UT. A lot of people talk about seeing offense and how exciting it is. I tell you what, I'm excited about the defense. Just great things going out here. How about that? K-State's defensive coordinator, Phil Bennett, sends a blitz from the right side. And guess what? Texas is rolling exactly into it. Right there's quarterback Major Applewhite trying to roll out, but he's running into Mark Simino. He turns around, and there's K-State's defensive end, Monty Beisel. A great defensive call and executed perfectly by the Wildcats. Second sack of the game for Kansas State. Third down and 20 for UT. Applewhite turns, a little delay handoff. K-State stuffs that play. They'll lose yards on that play. A three-yard loss as they knock him down at the 25-yard line. Devane Robinson hits Hodges Mitchell and brings him down there, and UT will be forced to punt as Kansas State pushes the horns backwards on that possession. Great defense. Sure, it looks like a pass play. Texas is just trying to move the ball upfield, get some field position, maybe break it loose, and K-State is right there to stuff it, and that means K-State's David Allen is back to return his first punt of the ball game. Ryan Long to punt for UT, averaging 42 yards a kick. And down here in Austin, they have been worried all week about number 32 of Kansas State. Allen had that electrified punt return a week ago. Long gets a kick away, and there's flags fly. K-State ran into the punter. The ball goes out of bounds at about the Kansas State 35, but they may kick this one again. As K-State knocked the punter over that time. As they went after it, it is on K-State. Is it a personal foul, Stan? No, it looks like the five-yard version, which means it'll still be fourth and long. And now, running into the turn. kicker by the defense. The penalty is the climb. First down. Jonathan Beasley in at quarterback for Kansas State. Football at their own 32. Staggered set. They move Nick Warren in motion. Beasley pitches it to David Allen. Trying to get off the right side. Allen cuts back. David gets to the 35. Flag comes out. About a six-yard pickup by David Allen, but uh, the flag is in the area of holding. Casey Hampton tracked down Allen that time but this may be coming back. It is holding on Kansas State. How about the quarterback switch? Well, I think K-State has two quarterbacks that they're playing with. They feel comfortable, equally comfortable with either one in a ball game. And Adam Helm had not really moved the team down the field. He had great field position two times, and there's no reason to wait around. When you got a guy, Jonathan Beasley, that's been your starter and shows that he can play, why not change things up? It sure worked last week when they brought in Adam Helm. It's a 13-yard penalty, so it'll be first and 23. Beasley will be in a shotgun. Twins to the far side. Jonathan gets the snap, looks downfield. Here comes a rush. They try to set the wide receiver screen to Quincy Morgan. He drops the pass at the 20-yard line. It'll be second down and 23 for Kansas State. As the Horns were charging hard, but K-State was trying to set up that screen. K-State football is brought to you by DuPont Finesse Herbicide. Fall and apply and kiss your weeds goodbye. And right now it looks like they're using their Starting offensive line at right guard, they have Andy Eby and a right tackle, John Robertson, in the ball game. So Milford Stevenson or Thomas Barnett are not in the ball game. So K-State's changing some things around, trying to find something that works. And right now, on second and very long, you don't think about picking it all up on this down. You think about just picking up part of the yardage. Holding penalties are just killers for drives. Second and 23, they snap it to John Olazetich instead of Beasley, but Texas snuffs it out and drops him for a two-yard loss. As the snap went to the fullback instead of the Beasley, Casey Hampton again there to make the tackle. He is playing like an all-conference defensive tackle. He's dominating in this inside. It's very tough to control him. 
he, you, he leads a team in tackles. You said that. I mean, it's amazing with the blitzing style defense they have. He leads the team. He was second team all Big 12 last year. He's a four-year starter. Heck, he had 77 tackles as a freshman, and he's only gotten better. And he's not the only defensive tackle. You can't just double team Casey Hampton all the time because Sean Rogers is also very good. Third and 26 for the Wildcats of their own 16. Staggered set. Twins of the near side, or far side. Beasley rolls the pocket, sets up, throws the ball downfield. Has a man down there trying to make the catch. He nearly picked off. Lockett was racing after the football. Longhorns came over. It was Lee Jackson, the strong safety, who got there just in time to knock the ball free. In fact, nearly made a pick, but that almost turned into a huge play for Kansas State as Lockett was racing after the football up near midfield. Mike Ronzik's third punt. He's back near the goal line. Courtney Garcia up near midfield for UT. 9.51 left to go first half. 7-6 Longhorns. Good snap. Ronzik kicks it away. A high kick. Garcia weighs for a fair catch at the Horn 48-yard line. So good field position for Texas. A 36-yard punt into the win, but no return. So it's a net punt of 36 yards. First and 10 for the Longhorns at their own 48-yard line. Staggered set. Twins to the far side. Applewhite turns. Play action fake. Back in the pocket. Throws the ball downfield. Has a man down there. Pass complete by Jones. Makes a catch. 20, 15, 10, 5. Lieber grabs him. Brings him down at the one-yard line. He fumbled the ball at the end of the play, but they'll say the ground caused the fumble, and the Horns will have first and goal at the one, Jeremy Jones got free for a 51-yard pass reception. We've seen Jeremy Jones do a great job on punt return, blocking a kick that was nullified with a penalty, but this time he got one-on-one -on -one with the K-State linebacker. He did an outstanding job of getting outside on the left sideline, and the ball was laid in perfectly by Major Applewhite, and then it was just a matter of when could you pull him down, and K-State's free safety, John McGraw, missed the tackle, and it took the defender, the linebacker, to get down there, and Lieber finally made a tackle at the one-yard line. High formation behind Major Applewhite, man in motion. To the near side, a turn handed off to the eye back, dives up over the top, touchdown Texas. Longhorns go in. That was Chris Robertson over the top. He's a good athlete and has leaped over the pile, and Texas leads 13 to 6. He normally plays fullback, but he plays tailback in the goal line situation because he is a great leaper. He leaped over the K-State defensive line into the end zone for a touchdown. It's only his 10th carry of the season, his fifth touchdown. He's the touchdown scorer down there, but it was all set up by a pass play on first down downfield. It took the ball to the one-yard line. And Chris Stockton to try to add a PAT here for Texas with 9-11 to go in the first half. Snap down, Stockton's kick is up, and the kick is good. 14-6, UT with the lead, 9-11 to go in the first half. Stockton with the approach, and the boot. End over end kick, sailing into the end zone. Murphy halfway back is going to come out with it. Murphy gets to the 10, cuts to the outside of the 20, and then goes down to the 21-yard line. We'll get down to the sideline now, Greg Akagi. Yeah, and after that 51-yard pass completion by Texas, safety Jonathan McGraw came out of that ball game favoring his left shoulder, and that's what they're currently looking at the sidelines, although I see him walking around right now, but that's what he was favoring. That's what they were looking at while on the sidelines after that pass completion. All right, Greg. Cats will have it at the 21-yard line here. They just need to draw, put something together. Even a couple of first downs at this point, Stan, would be a huge boost to the confidence of this offense. Jonathan Beasley out there for his second series at quarterback. Wildcats are going to go double tight end set. Frank Murphy will dot the eye. Morgan to the near side, lock it to the far side. First and 10 cats at their own 21. 9.01 left to go first half. Helm and Texas does jump across this time and tap a Wildcat on the shoulder. And Beasley raised up to point it out to the officials. I thought that's what had happened one other time, and they called K-State for motion. This time I think it is on Texas. Prior to the snap, offsides, on the defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Fifth penalty of the first half on UT. K-State has been blown, whistled for two. One of them a holding penalty, which really backed K-State up. We know Jonathan Beasley can do a nice job with this count. He can do a great job of keeping the defensive line off balance, pick up a few yards once in a while on a penalty, and that time Sean Rogers touched center Randall Cummins' hat, which gave the Wildcats a free five yards. So it's first and five. Beasley will be in a shotgun. Murphy off to his left. Wide receivers left and right. Snap it back to Jonathan. Look, sets, throws, pass in and out of the hands of Quincy Morgan. It'll be second down and five for Kansas State. Quincy last week against Iowa State, Stan, had a lot of bobbles. He was able to regather the ball and make the catch, but he's had two passes so far in the first half that have gone through his hands, and Quincy needs to tighten that up a little bit. Well, this is a time when you play under stress that you've got to make plays, and you're not going to get many opportunities against Texas to have good open 
openings and that type of thing. And that time, great pass by Jonathan Beasley. He threw it over a linebacker perfectly into the hands of Quincy Morgan. But Morgan did not pull it in. The Wildcats will have to make those catches to be successful. Second and five for the 26. Beasley in a shotgun. They snap it back to him, throws it out in flat. Passes in and out of the hands of Aaron Lockett. So now it'll be third down and five. That pass a little bit off target. Lockett at elite for it. But again, it's one that Lockett, we have seen make that catch a number of times. And K-State right now just really tensed up on the offense. Yeah, Aaron Lockett is only 5'7", but that football was still nicely thrown. And K-State's quarterbacks have struggled here early in the season, and they need some help from some guys making some catches. And that will give the quarterback confidence, but it gives the quarterback a lot of question. Am I throwing the ball wrong when he sees incomplete passes? Third and five from the 26, Beasley under center. Again, there's movement along the line. K-State snaps it back. There's no flag. And they gain about two yards, not enough for a first down. Kansas State thought there was movement by Texas. I think Randall Cummins thought they were in the neutral zone and snapped it back. The officials did not see it that way. K-State gains two yards, but it will be forced to punt on fourth down and three. Yeah, K-State really was hurt there because I think that, you know, you don't want to get on officials much, but the fact was, if I saw it right, there was a Texas move, obviously, and he was in the neutral zone when the ball was snapped. It should have been five yards for the Wildcats, but they didn't get it. So now they're going to have to punt the football. Mike Ronsick will be punting for the fourth time in the game. Garcia back deep. It's Kansas State unable to get a first down on that series, even though they had first and five. Play clock ticking down at two, one. They get it back to Ronsick, and he gets a kick away. Kick that turns over for him. Garcia back inside of his 30, makes a catch at the 28, and eludes a Wildcat. Comes up field and then bumped out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. About a 12-yard return after a 42-yard punt. Texas has it at the 40. And now you got to rely on that defense to hold the score right where it is, which has Texas in front, 14 to 6. Greg mentioned that John McGraw was dinged up, but he's out there here for first and 10 for Texas with the ball at their own 39-yard line. 7.59 left in the half. Major with one back behind him. Turns, hands it off to Hodges. Mitchell has a hole. Mitchell gets hit by McGraw at midfield, but has a first down after an 11-yard pickup on the play. And UT converts their 10th first down of the first half. K State only has one first down so far in the game. Hodges Mitchell is a nice runner. He's averaged 5.3 yards a carry, but you rarely see Mario Fadafe get blocked, but he was knocked down on the play. The left tackle, Leonard Davis, that has come in a ball game, did a great job of cutting him down, and Hodges Mitchell ran right where the defender was knocked down. Fadafe, he comes out, Devane Robinson in. They turn hand it off to Hodges Mitchell, trying to get around the corner. And Hodges stops, cuts back, gets about four or five yards, five yards down to the 45 of Kansas State. Lamar Chapman makes a tackle. It'll be second and five for Texas with the ball at the 45. And Stan, you do have to worry right now a little bit about fatigue for Kansas State. As you mentioned earlier, it's a hot day, and they've been out there for a lot of snaps here in the first half. And Texas is very much a momentum offense. They like to roll you. Early in the ball game is when they like to do it. They've they score a lot. They've scored in their first possession four out of five games, now four out of six. They've outscored their opponents 150 to 25 in the first half. They usually like to get off to big leagues with early momentum. But K-State kind of stopped that in the first quarter here tonight. They turn hand it off to Hodges on a delay. He eludes a couple of tacklers, gets about two yards to the 43. Cooper brings him down. K-State had a blitz on that time. And Hodges did a nice job of making positive yards out of that. That could have been a loss of three or four. You know, that'd be third down and three for the Horns of the ball at the cat 43-yard line. And what Texas is trying to do often on second down is run a little running play up the middle and hope that K-State over pursues, runs right past the running back. At times, some of the players did, but others were there to make the tackle and set up this third and three situation. Mitchell now nine carries 42 yards in the game apple white will be in a shotgun three wide outs in the pattern to the near side one to the far side on third and three they now put jones in motion k-state thinking blitz and they come after him apple white throws the ball downfield passes picked off by kansas state intercepted on the far side by jeremetrius butler two weeks in a row butler has an interception fourth in his career and kansas state's defense has held and it was all set up by a blitz from the safety for kansas state apple white throws it away and gets picked off what a great job by jared cooper he lined up about 10 yards off the ball and then he timed it out perfectly he started working to the line of scrimmage and then was in a dead sprint when the ball was snapped he went right through untouched he was right in major apple white's face and 
Major Applewhite was just dropping back and threw the ball soft to the outside. He thought maybe he could throw the football for a completion, but it was overthrown in K-State. Jeremy Trius Butler was there for the interception. First and 10 from the 38 handoff. Frank Murphy bounces to the outside. Murphy lowers his shoulder, gets about four yards to the 42. It'll be second down and six. Now this offense, Dan, which has pretty good field position here with the ball out past their 40, has to put something together with 5.58 to go in the first half, down 14 to six. That's right. This is a real good opportunity to turn some things around and K-State comes in with a different line right now. They move Thomas Barnett to the right tackle position. They move Milford Stevenson in at left tackle. This is a combination that they've used earlier in the ball game, and they go back to it with Andy Eby playing the right guard. They actually only credit Murphy with a three-yard pickup. It'll be second and seven from the 41. Staggered set by Jonathan Beasley. Jonathan turns, hands off Frank Murphy. Not much room to run. In fact, he loses a yard back of the 40. Texas just fires through there, and Murphy had no place to run to. Tyrone Jones, one of the linebackers, made the stop for UT. It'll be third down and eight for K-State with a ball at their own 40. Well, when you run safeties through the middle of the defense, which Texas will do, they'll fire linebackers. You've got to make sure you have gap control. That means every person has a certain gap. Now, the advantage that Texas have is their big front four is so good, they usually hold their gaps pretty well, so the little guys can run more and run after the offensive players and they've done an outstanding job of executing that blitz defense. Beasley in a shot, got on fourth, third down and eight. Back to throw, Jonathan sets, throws, pass, he has caught Morgan, first down, K-State up in midfield. Actually, they'll mark it at the Texas 48. Irvis Hill makes the tackle, but K-State gets just their second, first down to the first half, good throw and catch by Beasley and Morgan. Super throw by Jonathan Beasley right on time as Quincy Morgan turned around against that man-to-man -man coverage. Irvis Hill was right there, but with the ball delivered like it was, Quincy Morgan picks up a big first down for the Wildcats on a third down conversion. And for the first time in this quarter, K-State's in Texas territory with a ball at the Longhorn 48-yard line. Beasley in a shotgun. Texas showing blitz. Back to throw Beasley. Set throws. Pass. Caught Morgan at the 40. Knocked out of bounds by Irvis Hill at the Texas 40-yard line. An eight-yard pickup on first down. And Jonathan Beasley against and throwing in rhythm. Yes, and what they're seeing is the cornerbacks for Texas are dropping off and they're throwing the ball to the outside. They're not dropping way up, but what you do is you push them upfield and then cut to the outside. As long as you can throw and catch, there's no way the blitz is going to get to you. Now, watch for Texas to make adjustments. Watch for the cornerbacks to get a little antsy and say, I can't let that guy catch that pass. He's going to zip in there and try to make the interception. So what you've got to do is make sure you see the cornerback, don't throw it underneath, and then take that opportunity to have him go out and up for the big play from the Wildcat perspective. Second down and two. Beasley maybe changing the play at the line on a scrimmage, play clock going down, and Jonathan raises up and calls a timeout. That'll be Kansas State's final timeout of the first half with 4.26 to go. Beasley in a shotgun, two wide outs in the pattern to the near side. Jonathan's going to run a quarterback draw. Jonathan has the first down. Stutter steps his way inside the 35, down to the 34-yard line. A pickup of six on that play, and enough for a cat first down. That was a play we saw a lot of a year ago with Michael Bishop, and that time Beasley ran it, ran it well, lost his shoe, but has to retie it over there on the 40-yard line. Well, it's a good compliment. If you start throwing the football out of the shotgun, then you can add the quarterback run game. It may not be Michael Bishop taking it down for a touchdown, but there was great blocking there, and Beasley picked up a first down. K-State needs to do some of the quarterback run game, mixing in with the pass to keep Texas off balance. Beasley in a shotgun on first and 10 from the Horn 34. Wide outs left and right. Lazatich off to his left. They snap it back to Jonathan. Looks, sets, throws in the out pattern. Pass caught by Lockett, who's driven back, but made the catch at about the 28-yard line. A pickup of six on first down Ahmad Brooks made the tackle that time. Aaron Lockett only had one catch last week. Has 11 catches on the season coming into today's game, and that's his second catch here today. But he does not have a touchdown catch yet, and they would like to change that. They need to get the ball to their big play receiver. That time, Texas dropped off. They've been that tight man-to-man. -man. This time, they dropped back in thirds coverage, played a little bit of zone, but Beasley did a good job of recognizing that, throwing the out route underneath the coverage. It was wide open over there. K-State's doing a nice job of passing on first down. Second and four from the Horn 48. Staggered set behind Beasley. Murphy dots the eye. They turn back to throw Beasley. Pumps, throws it in the out pattern. Pass caught. First down at the 20-yard line. Nice catch by Quincy Morgan. And Stan, I believe, a sidearm throw by Jonathan Beasley to get it to Morgan. Down to the 19-yard line. Another cat first down. They threw it right in front of Ahmad Brooks. Oh, that might have been submarine. Dan Quisenberry, the late pitcher for the Royals would have been very happy. He pumped and then he pulled his arm back and just swung that thing either sidearm or lower outside and there was good coverage but a nice catch for the Wildcat receivers have really done a good job making some catches here as this drive has developed. They have it now at the Texas 20-yard line. 
Jonathan Beasley is connected on his last three passes. Five wideouts in the pattern for the Wildcats. One on the play clock. They snap it back. Beasley back. Sets, throws, pass. Is caught over the middle inside the 15-yard line. It's Frank Murphy down to around the 12, an eight-yard pickup. Everick Rawls makes a tackle, and Kansas State starting to find some rhythm now in offense. Have it second and two at the 12-yard line. Beasley's doing a nice job of throwing the ball on time. He recognized exactly what he wanted. Texas was spread out over the field. There was no one over the middle. Now that means K-State can take an opportunity to possibly run a quarterback draw in that situation. There are no linebackers. If they can separate right up the middle, it's wide open to the end zone in that formation because K-State goes right back to five wide. Second and two from the 12. They do stay with no backs behind Beasley. Snap it. Jonathan looks, rolls, holds it, looks, gets hit. Now rolling back to the far side, gets a nice block, throws the ball to the end zone, passes, nearly picked off by Texas. Nearly a huge mistake by Jonathan Beasley, and Bill Snyder's livid on the far sideline with his quarterback. He says, Jonathan, you got to run the football in that instance because all you did there was give Texas a chance to pick it off. And there is football 101 going on on the far side from Bill Snyder. Yeah, Beasley was rolling to his left, did not get his whole body behind the football. He had an open receiver over there, George Wynn, but he couldn't get enough steam on it. It was almost picked off by Irvis Hill, but a dangerous play there by Jonathan Beasley. But the Wildcats still the football. They're still in good shape, third and short. Third and two from the 12. They again go with four wideouts this time. Now Murphy slides out. Jonathan, back quarterback draw, picks his way forward. Dye stays on his feet, gets down to the seven-yard line and gets the first down. Good, tough run by Jonathan Beasley. Spread him out, Stan, and then run up the middle with Beasley. Five-yard pickup, first and goal for the Wildcats of the seven. A minute 55 left on the first half. That's what we expected to see. Spread him out, throw the football, but there's a gap right up the middle. Now, the tough part is the Texas defensive tackles are so good. It's not a dead cinch that you're going to get by him. And we saw it right there. There was an opening. The K-State offensive line did a good job, but it wasn't a walk-in touchdown. Beasley was kind of great but he's a strong runner. He picks up a first down on an important third down conversion. They actually mark it at the eight. First and goal from the eight. Staggered set for Kansas State. With Nick Warren, the tight end in motion. They pitch it back to Frank Murphy. Needs a block. Murphy gets hit and knocked out at the 10. So it'll be second and goal with the ball at the 10. Texas says the ball came out. Is there any official motion? Do they say the ground caused the fumble? It's still Kansas State football at the 10-yard line, second and goal. It was Lee Jackson, the strong safety, that made the hit. Well, it's such a key block when you run a sweep at the point of attack, and the K-State tight end in motion was Nick Warren, and he moved over, and he had the key block, and he was unable to get there. He didn't make the block on Lee Jackson, and that just blew up the play at the line of scrimmage. Second and goal for the 10 I formation behind Beasley. Quincy Morgan, the one wide out in the pattern to the near side. K-State is gone with double tights. Warren in motion to the near side. Beasley. Maybe changing the play. K-State's out of timeouts here. Four in the play clock, three in the play clock. Flag comes out. Must have been motion on Kansas State. They were trying to check to the fade. And this is probably going to be on the Wildcats and cost them five yards here. And that'll make things more difficult. Although sometimes, Stan, you back up a little bit, gives you a little bit more room to run some patterns. Right snap. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. The 11th play of the drive. Second and goal from the 15, one back behind Beasley. Three wideouts in the pattern. Jonathan Setz throws ball with the middle pass in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. It was Lockett. It'll now be third and goal. 28 seconds left in the half. So time is ticking away from Kansas State. And stand here, you got to be careful because you're out of timeouts. So if you get tackled and don't get in the end zone, you're going to have to hustle that field goal team on the field and try to get that kick before time expires. Yeah, there's a lot to be considered right now because really they're thinking about executing a play, getting a touchdown, but you're right. You have to think about that. If you get tackled anywhere on the field that's not in the end zone or out of bounds. Beasley will be in a shotgun. Three wideouts in the pattern. Play clock at five. They snap it back to Jonathan. Sets, looks, holds, throws the ball in the corner, looking for Quincy Morgan. Cannot make the catch. It's incomplete. And Texas's defense is held. And the Wildcats will be forced to try a field goal here with 23 seconds left in the half. But, but that's, that's not all that bad, Stan, because now you can pull yourself within one score if you get three points out of this. Well, the offense did a nice job. They wanted the touchdown. And on the draw play, when we went to the quarterback draw, it was open actually. On a replay, we saw that Jonathan Beasley was actually bumped into by the K-State lineman trying to execute his block. So unfortunate for the Wildcats, but here they need to score to get this game closer. 32-yard attempt for Jamie Reem. He's two for three from this range in his career. Snap down. Reem's kick is up. The kick is 
Good. Jamie Ream has hit three field goals in the first half, and it's 14 to nine. Wildcats are back to within five. A 32-yard kick, and the Wildcats are now down 14 to nine with 19 seconds left in the half. Jamie Ream, the approach and the kick. Headed toward Jones on the near side, makes a catch at the 10. Jones gets up to the 15, and Adrian Beard knocks his feet out from underneath him at the 22-yard line. So Texas will probably have one more snap here before halftime. Let's pause here 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Wildcat Sports Network. Greg Sharp, Stan Weber, Ed O'Donnell, Greg Akagi, and Mike Ryan back at Texas's Memorial Stadium in Austin. We are 15 seconds away from halftime. The Longhorns lead 14 to nine over Kansas State. A defensive struggle in the first half. The Wildcats have forced three turnovers in the first half, but have only been able to manage three field goals out of those turnovers. Major Applewhite goes to a knee, and that's the end of the first half. K-State. Needs to find some offense, but they're, the good news is they're still very much a part of this football game. Only down 14 to 9, and the Cats will get the ball to start the third quarter. Chris Stockton has it teed up at the 35. Frank Murphy, Quincy Morgan, back deep for Kansas State. End over end kick, about 10 yards deep. Murphy's going to come out with it for K-State. Frank to the 10, gets ankle tripped up and goes down at about the 24-yard line. But again, a pretty good decision by Frank. If he goes to a knee that deep, which most people would, you get it at the 20. He's able to race it out to the 24. That's that great speed. Now, Stan, let's see if K-State can continue the momentum that they built up at the end of that first half with this first offensive drive. They really need to because their offense has only gained 52 total yards in the first half, and Mac Brown's defense is just playing excellent right now. The best defensive performance he had was last week against Baylor in his tenure here at Texas. They gave up only 159 yards. They've done better than that in the first half. Four wideouts in the pattern. Snap it back to Beasley. He's going to run off the left side. Jonathan gets four to about the 28. A gain of four on first down. It'll be second down and six. Again, we'll say it just as we did last week. Bill Snyder is a master at halftime adjustments to come out and see what happened in that first half and how to try to make things work better. Let's see what he has in store for the Horns here in the third quarter. Yeah, this is a great coaching matchup because Mac Brown has a very experienced staff and does a great job with changes also. So we've seen it throughout the quarters here, the first and second quarter, but Bill's a master at halftime, and he needs to do something to spark this offense to keep it going like it was in the last possession of the first half. Second and six, K-State with double tight ends. Liza Titch, the one back with Beasley, who's in the shotgun. They snap it back. Jonathan's going to run off the right side this time. Cuts up inside and goes down. Late flag comes out. Maybe no gain on the play for Kansas State. Let's see what the penalty's all about. It's holding on Kansas State. Backs the football up to the 18-yard line. So it will be second down and 16 for Kansas State. Beasley gets the start in the second half at quarterback. Wide receivers left and right. Lazatich, the one back behind Jonathan. Play action fake. Beasley throws it over the middle of the tight end. Shad Meyer makes a catch across the 30, gets up to the 34, and may have a first down. And that's the first catch of the season for a Wildcat tight end. Goes to Shad Meyer, and the Cats pop it for 16 yards, and looks like enough for a Cat first down. Lee Jackson makes a tackle. Oh, nice job by Jonathan Beasley. He faked the ball into the middle of the line, and he stood right up and popped the ball to the tight end. It's a type of play that option teams run. You have your tight end run on a little arc, and he catches the football right over the middle of the field. Nicely delivered and Chad Meyer does a great job of pulling forward and picking up a first down on second and long. So the Cats bail out the holding penalty, have it up to the 34-yard line, first and 10. Three wideouts in the pattern, Beasley in a shotgun, Lazatich, the one back in the backfield with Beasley. They snap it back to Jonathan, holds, looks, shows the ball long, looking for Quincy Morgan. Morgan in and out of his hands, incomplete. It'll be second down for Kansas State and 10 yards to go. Ahmad Brooks there on the coverage for UT. Well, it looks too much like an instant replay of the Iowa State pass. Throwing the football to the right side of the football field, the ball was dropped in perfectly to Quincy Morgan as he beat the coverage downfield, but he is not able to pull the ball in. The Wildcats miss a great opportunity to have a big play. Second and 10 for KC with the ball at the 34. Lazatich coming out of the lineup. Frank Murphy comes in. 
Cats a little slow getting out of the huddle. They get up to the line now with 10 on the play clock. Beasley under center. Twins to the far side. One wide out in the pattern to the near side. They pitch it to Frank Murphy. Murphy gets a block on the corner. Steps back inside of the 40. Leans forward to the 43. A nine-yard pickup. It'll be third and one for the Wildcats. That's the biggest rushing play of the ball game for Kansas State. Actually, Jonathan, yeah, that's the biggest rushing play, a nine-yard rush for K-State. Murphy had an eight-yard gain earlier in the first half. You notice how Texas started running on second down after an incomplete pass. K-State does the same thing. They do a great job of running a sweep as the cornerback drops away. The quarterback, Ahmad Brooks, was in his zone coverage, so he was moving away from the area. And then Frank Murphy did a great job of getting past the nickelback. Roderick Babers is in instead of a linebacker in the nickel coverage, and they get a third and short. Third and one, double tights. Jonathan Beasley, quarterback keeper drives forward it's close he didn't get a whole bunch it looked like he had pretty good push off that left side they stretch the chains hold it down case they gets it by half the length of the football thank goodness 14 9 Longhorns case they would first and 10 from their own 44 Beasley under center Murphy the one back back to throw is Jonathan being flushed out of the pocket gets hit looks holds the ball looks downfield throws downfield pass caught Martez Wesley pulls the Texas defender into Longhorn territory at the 48 good composure by Beasley to keep looking downfield it's an eight yard pickup on the play tackle was made by Ahmad Brooks and Tyrone Jones of UT well they look like they're running the same play where they fake inside and hit the tight end this time it was better covered but Texas was in an all-out blitz handed to the K-State front wall those that offensive line and running backs did an outstanding job of giving Beasley time to work around back there sure there was one rusher one defender in a backfield but with all the guys coming it's amazing that no one else broke through Beasley does a good job of throwing a rocket pass to Martez Wesley and K-State picks up some yardage on first down third second down and three Beasley in a shotgun Laza titch the one back they snap it back to Jonathan he's gonna run Beasley gets hit stays on his feet gets a first down to the 45 drives past a Texas Longhorn defender all the way to the 41 yard line it's a pickup of eight for Jonathan Beasley in the play. Kansas State is finding some rhythm on offense now as they move into Longhorn territory at the 41. They're doing a nice job of mixing things up and dictates, dictating to the Texas Longhorns, and that's what you need, this kind of rhythm, and K-State's moving the ball down the field, and they pick up another first down. Good, strong run that time my quarterback, Jonathan Beasley. He's not going to have the speed that you see from a Michael Bishop, but he's a powerful young man, a very big player at 220 pounds. He put his head down and pushed forward for a first down. They actually mark it at the UT 42. First and 10 for the Cats there. I formation behind Beasley. Twins to the far side. A turn. Hand it off to Frank Murphy, trying to get around the left side. Murphy gets to the 40. Down to the 39. A gain of three on first down. It'll be second down and seven for Kansas State. Cedric Woodard. He made the tackle that time from his end spot. And the Texas Longhorns come in with a substitute on the defensive line. They're worried about being worn out. Remember, they watched Kansas State move down the field right before the halftime in 13 plays, and now the Wildcats have already ran eight plays on this drive. They did a good job of running off the left side because there was a blitz coming from the other side from the Longhorns. 11 minutes left, third quarter, 14-9. Longhorns. K-State was second and seven from the 39 of Texas. Beasley in a shotgun. Two backs in the backfield with him. Snap it back. He throws it out in the flat. Passes in and out of the hands of Quincy Morgan. Tough catch that time. The throw a little bit high. Irvis Hill in the coverage. It'll be third and seven now for the Cats with the ball to Texas. 39. It's a pizza hut afternoon because the Wildcats are playing. Nothing's better than listening to Wildcat action while enjoying a fresh, hot pizza from Pizza Hut. Order now and get your favorite things together. Wildcat football and Pizza Hut. Well, that's a nice play call. He's wide open. Jonathan, if he's had any problem in the early weeks, is throwing a little bit high. That time the ball was high and his receiver couldn't pull it down. So now we are in a third and long situation. Third and seven from the Horn 39. Twins to the near side. Staggered set. Beasley play action fake. Back in the pocket. Look, look, throws it deep, looking for Aaron Lockett down near the goal line, and the ball sails out of bounds, incomplete. It'll be fourth down, and K-State will be forced to punt here and try to nail Texas in deep. Pretty good drive for the Wildcats, a 10-play drive, Stan, but no points, and it stalls at the Horn 39. Well, it's been like all the K-State offensive drives that had some success. The Wildcats have some comfort in it, but they're not really happy. The Texas defense is just as happy. They stopped K-State before they got in scoring range. They bent, but they did not break. So both teams here are looking around, not completely happy, but the Wildcats at least move the football down the field. Snap it back to Mike Ronsick, kicks it up high in the air. K-State trying to get down to, to cover it. It's going to bounce inside the five and skip on into the end zone. But boy, barely. It only went about two yards deep into the end zone. But Texas will come out to the 20-yard line with the football. Major Applewhite leads his offense out on the field. Has twins to the near side, one wide receiver to the far side, and Hodges Mitchell, the one back behind him. Major turns, 
Hands it off to Mitchell. Cuts off. Gets knocked down. Gains about four. Monty Beisel makes a tackle for Kansas State. Actually, they'll say a gain of five up to the 25. It'll be second down and five for UT. You can see that Hodges Mitchell is very quick, Greg. There wasn't much chance there, not much time for an opening, but he got through there and got five yards. What they do is try to cut back. They really respect K-State's speed, and they try to cut back, and they've had a little bit of success. K-State's still playing with five defensive backs as they start this second half on defense. Second and five. Applewhite changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Ten minutes left, third quarter. Applewhite back in the pocket. Sets, looks, K-State with a rush, throws it over to flat, pass is incomplete. It'll be third down and five, intended for Kwame Cavill at about the 30. Lamar Chapman on the coverage, and boy, the Cats were coming hard after Applewhite that time. Nice blitz by the Wildcats, but it brings up one of those important mini plays. If K-State can get Texas three and out right away, it sets the tone for the second half that their defense has been on the field all afternoon. If they get a first down, they start all over, and it may start into a drive. So this becomes a critical play right here in this ball game. They have four wideouts through the Longhorns in the pattern, three to the near side. Applewhite and a shotgun. Now they move a man in motion, that's Jones. Long count, flags come out, and there was movement on the offensive line of UT. Yeah, left guard Roger Raisler moved in his stance. He was in a two-point stance anyway, but he moved his shoulders up, gave the motion like he was ready to go back into pass blocking. That's five yards against Texas. Six Snap. penalty. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Sixth penalty on UT in the game. Now it's third and ten. Now it really becomes an important uh, time for your defense to try to shut them down. Texas two for six, stand on third downs in the first half. Yeah, you got to take advantage of this opportunity. K-State's in the dime package. That means Deron Tyler, who's not played too much this year, is on the field. Applewhite in a shotgun. Three wideouts in the pattern to the near side, one to the far side. Applewhite takes a snap, looks downfield, has time, throws over the middle pass, is caught for a first down by Kwame Cavill at the 31-yard line. John McGraw on the coverage that time, but Cavill makes the catch. K-State's done a pretty good job on Cavill. That's just his third reception of the game, but that's a big one there as they convert a huge third down play. They have it at their own 31, major under center, staggered set behind him, wide receivers left and right. Applewhite turns, play action fake, back in the pocket, Fadafehi rushing, Applewhite throws it downfield and overshoots the intended receiver, Jeremetrius Butler on the coverage, it was intended for Ryan Nunez, and Major got popped at the end of that throw by Fadafehi, it'll be second and ten. We've talked a lot about Texas's great defensive tackles, well K-State is developing a great defensive tackle as well, Mario Fadafehi does a great job of busting through the line and he really put a shot on Major Applewhite who overthrew the football. UT with the ball at their 31, 9-17 left third quarter. Texas 14, Kansas State 9, a battle of top 15 teams here today in Austin. Applewhite has three wideouts in the pattern of the near side, one to the far side. He's in a shotgun, takes a snap, looks upfield. Fadafei puts pressure. The Cats hit him. He kind of fling, flings the ball forward, and it should be an incompleted pass. Almost a Brett Favre-type play that time by Applewhite, who was being sandwiched. He kind of shovel passed the ball forward. It fell incomplete. That's all it's going to be is an incompleted forward pass. It's third and ten now for Texas, and another key play in this game. Yeah, another big opportunity for the Wildcats. In football, doesn't matter how you can throw it. You can actually throw it underhand if you want. It's still a pass if the ball goes forward and the quarterback wants it to be a pass. Leonard Davis, the big left tackle, limping off. So Corey Kwai will move to the left side, and Mike Williams will come in at right tackle. Show your K-State spirit with a power cat visa. Not only will you show your support for K-State, you'll be supporting the K-State Alumni Association and its programs. For more information or to apply for your own power cat visa, call the K-State Alumni Association at 1-800-600-ALUM. Third and ten. Four wideouts in a pattern. Nunez in motion to the near side. Applewhite in a shotgun. Back in the pocket. Steps up. But whistles blow. This play has been blown dead. Might be a legal procedure on the offense. If that's the case, then Hal Dowden's going to tell us. False start on the offense. Five yards penalty. Still third down. Four wideouts in the pattern. Applewhite will be in a shotgun. The Cats did not bring pressure on that last third and long. Let's see if they do here. Major pointing out all the cats and where they're lined up on defense. Takes a snap. Here comes Chapman on the blitz. Throws the ball to the middle. Pass incomplete. And they did bring the corner blitz that time from the safety, actually. Lamar Chapman. It's incomplete. Fourth down, and Texas will be forced to punt. 
K-State got there real quick, forcing Applewhite to throw the football over the middle of the field, and David Allen gets his second chance to go back and look at a punt return. If Texas even punts him the football, it looked like the first time they were just booting the ball out of bounds. No matter how few yards it went downfield, they do not want to see David Allen returning the football. Ryan Long's first punt sailed 44 yards. Allen back at the K-State 30. Long at his own 10 to kick this one away. Good snap. Long gets it away. Hangs it up there. Allen's going to catch it at about the 25. Allen eludes the first Longhorn. Gets up field to the 30. Allen to the 40. Has some room to midfield. Allen to the 40. Allen down the sideline to the 30. Allen to the 20. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Oh, he did it again. Second straight week for David Allen. And for the second straight year, he brings one back against the University of Texas. And Kansas State leads 15 to 14. David Allen ties the NCAA record. Seven career returns. He ties Johnny Rogers of Nebraska, Jack Mitchell of Oklahoma, but hand it to the rest of the return team. It was not only David Allen, it was great blocking by everyone down the right side. Allen caught the football, avoided one guy, and when he turned it to the right side, he didn't juke, he just ran because there were Wildcats setting up a wall all the way down the field. He pointed down, he said, Bryce Leibel, make a block for me, I'll go the rest of the way. And David Allen, for the second week in a row, scores a touchdown on a punt return. It's a 77-yard return. k is going to go go for two here, Stan, up by one point. This will make it a three-point game. They're trying to get everybody onto the field. The play clock's going to run out on Kansas State. And jo Jonathan Beasley's asking for a timeout, and they will take one. So Kansas State takes a timeout. They put the ball at the three-yard line, right in the middle of the field. K-State has twins to the near side. Beasley in a shotgun. They now move Lockett in motion. Beasley barks out the signals. Murphy's in the backfield with Beasley. They snap it back to Jonathan. Looks, holds, throws, pass incomplete. So the Cats do not convert the two-point play, but they do have the lead. 15-14, Kansas State. What we have here is a setup for a war as we play one and a half more quarters, and who knows, maybe overtimes to find out who's the best of these two teams today. Jamie Rain with the approach and the kick into the wind, trying to kick it to the near side. Jones makes a catch at the five and fumbles it out of bounds. That would have gone out of bounds, and it would have been a flag on Kansas State, but Jones touched it, and Texas will start this drive stand at the six-yard line. Let's go to Greg Akagi. Yeah, you talked about David Allen's punt return. You talked about the block Bryce Leibel had on the punter. Well, there was a punishing block at the front of the attack, and that was by Chris Claybon, who sprung David Allen down that right sideline. So like you said, give credit to all the K-State defenders on that return because they sprung David Allen just down that right sideline. I don't think the special teams coach could not have drawn it up any better for Kansas State to get a touchdown. Yeah, and Stan, you're right. It was so opposed to last week's punt return where Allen did so much of it. This time, boy, K-State just nailed their blocks on that punt return. Now Texas backed up by their own six to start this drive. Split backs behind Apple White, twins to the far side. They now move Hodges Mitchell in motion to the near side. Applewhite with an on count. Back to throw is Major. Looks, throws it out in the flat to Mitchell. Makes a catch, spins upfield. Flung out of bounds by Cooper at the 14. A gain of eight on the play. It'll be second end and two for Texas, but they get out of the hole. There is a flag, though, down in the backfield. It is holding on Texas. That'll notify the pass play and go half the distance to the goal. They'll march it down inside the five of the three. Major under center, staggered set behind him, wide receivers left and right. They turn, hand it off to Mitchell, gets hit right at the goal line. He'll they'll mark him at the one-yard line, and inside the one, K-State's defense just collapsed on that play. A loss of two, Mark Simino makes the hit. The Cats really have the horns backed up now. K-State can continues to play very well in that middle front. But here right now, Phil Bennett's remembering a play from last year when the Texas Longhorns in this situation against Oklahoma threw the ball deep on a post pattern. They don't mind putting the ball in Major Applewhite's hands even in this situation. So K-State's got to look for the balance. It still could be a pass play as well as a run. Terrence Newman into the defensive back for Kansas State to the far side. Split backs behind Applewhite on second and 15. Back to throw is Major. Throws the ball out in the flat. Kwame Cavill, did he make the catch? Yes, at the 10. Nice grab, a nine-yard pickup. It'll be third and six now for UT with the ball at the 10. Newman made the tackle that time. So Terrence Newman on the field right now for Kansas State. He was in on the last possession for Jeremetrius Butler as well. So he's made some plays out there that time. They ran the out pattern, set it up pretty well, but good coverage by the Wildcats means that Texas only has the ball out to the 10-yard line. It's third and six. I wonder if Butler's hurt. We'll have Greg Akagi check into that. Big play here. Third down and six on the 10 for Texas. Split backs, wide receivers left and right. 7-10 left third quarter. K-State 15, Texas 14. Applewhite back in the pocket. Sets, looks, throws, ball. Caught Cavill first down up to the 18-yard line. Actually, they'll mark it at the 19. Threw it in front of Dyshot Carter. Texas gets out of a big hole that time. 
coming down from their goal line, getting it out to the 19 and keeping the drive alive on Kansas State. Well, Texas won one of the little mini battles trying to get off their goal line. They did a good job of getting off the one yard line. That time throwing a curl route to their go-to guy, Kwame Cavill. Had 37 receptions coming in. He's the guy they're going to try to find all over the field. They do it two times in, in a row to pick up a first down. Have it out to the 19. Split backs behind Applewhite. Twins to the far side. Now they move Mitchell in motion. They threw to him the last time they lined up like this. Applewhite, long count. Lieber showing blitz. Back to throw is Applewhite. K-State coming after him hard. Lofts a pass downfield looking for Cavill. Makes a catch out near the 45-yard line. Carter was a little slow getting over there. Cavill pulls it in. It's a pickup of 26 yards. There's a Wildcat slow to get up back in the backfield. It might be Ben Lieber. But now Texas has gotten themselves out of the hole up to the 45, and Lieber's very wobbly as he heads back toward the huddle. He's going to come out for Terrell Williams. Yeah, you throw this lofting flag pattern against man-to-man -man because your fullback steps up and makes a great block. That time, Texas's fullback, Ricky Brown, was right there. He popped Ben Lieber, who was on the blitz, and Lieber has to walk off. Not only was it a hard enough hit to send Lieber out of the game, but it really gave the quarterback, Major Applewhite, plenty of time to find Kwame Cavill. Split backs by Applewhite, twins to the near side. They hand off on a delay. K-State hits it and brings it down. Uh, no gain on the play. Maybe Terrell Williams was there along with Mark Simino for K-State. Let's go to Greg Akagi. Yeah, Jeremy Tris Butler, he is back into the ball game. He was in on that play. The uh, trainers were looking at him, but it looked like he might have just gotten his bell rung. And right now, I think that's exactly what they're looking at for Ben Lieber. He might have got his bell rung. They're really trying to talk to him, making sure he's okay. Hard-hitting game, and now Deron Tyler's in for Dyshut Carter. K-State's trying to substitute some people. You have to do it on a hot, hot day like today is. Second and 10 for UT. Ball at their, their own 44. 544 left to go third quarter. K-State by one. Split max behind Apple White. Wide receivers left and right. Cavill in motion. Back to throw is Major Case in a blitz. They don't get him in time. They do hurry the throw, which sails incomplete. But Cooper was coming from the blind side that time. It'll be third and ten now for UT. And another huge play stand here on third down. Yeah, it wasn't only a linebacker blitz up the middle. This time they brought strong safety Jared Cooper from the backside. Ben Lieber is healthy. He's coming back in a ball game, but he's taking out Travis Litton, not Terrell Williams, who substituted for him. What K-State is doing is giving some rest to some players. Greg, you're exactly right. Some of the cornerbacks who are having to run sprints on every play is, are getting substituted for trying to keep people fresh as the hot afternoon sun beats down on them. Well, remember, K-State, because of the punt return, has had to play two defensive series in a row. Third and ten. Huge play here. Applewhite in a shotgun. Four wideouts in a pattern. K-State showing blitz. Applewhite rolls a pocket to the near side. Looks, throws, passes. In and Complete. In and out of the hands of Cavill on the coverage that time was Lamar Chapman for the Wildcats, and UT will be forced to punt on fourth and ten. Lamar Chapman has been a key to this defensive system today because he has the ability to play cornerback. Early in his career, he was a cornerback. So when K-State brings extra defensive backs in, they put John McGraw back at the free safety position, and Lamar Chapman has tough man-to-man -to -man coverage duties. That time he was right there. The K-State pressure was perfect, hitting Major Applewhite. A good defensive stand by the Wildcats forced Texas to punt. This time, Texas is in much better field position, though, so they can afford to try to keep the ball away from David Allen. Ryan Long will putt for the third time in the game. Allen back at the Cat 15. 5.33 left to go third quarter. Low kick by Long, and he angles it away from Allen. It takes a Texas bounce inside the 15, inside the 10, and down at the 9-yard line. That is a really good punt by Ryan Long. K-State will be backed up to start this drive. Great defenses attacking the offense. It's good balance by both offense. K-State has run the football 22 times and passed 22. Texas has passed 23 times and run 23 times. Beasley in a shotgun. Three wideouts in the pattern to the near side. Lazatich, the one back. Beasley's going to run off the left side and goes down at the 7. He'll lose two yards. So their case, they tried to spread UT out and run, but it, it didn't go anywhere. They lose a couple, and it was again Casey Hampton on the tackle. Second and 12 now from the seven. K-State had a four wide receiver package in the ball game, and this Texas team is going to be hard to run on when you got backed up. And now the crowd becomes a factor because it's hard to hear. They know finally that their defense is in a position to have to make a big play. For the first time, their defense is on the field, and their ball club is behind. Beasley in a shotgun again. They go three wide outs on the pattern to the near side, one to the far side. Second and 12 from the Cat 7. Beasley takes the snap. Looks downfield, throws over the middle, pass. Caught Martez Wesley to the 20. Wesley to the 25, up to the 27-yard line. A 20-yard pass play as Kansas State hits it over the middle. Everick Rawls, one of the linebacker, made the tackle, but a big catch by Wesley. Good throw by Beasley. 
when you see throw, when you see blitzes, you're going to see man-to-man -man coverage, and you're going to see guys open over the middle. The front did a good job of giving quarterback Jonathan Beasley time, and Martez Wesley made a nice little move, a swim move into the inside. He was open. He picked up a first down, a big play by Martez Wesley. KC gets it out to the 27. First and 10 for the Cats. One back, Murphy, off to the left of Beasley, who's under center. They pitch it off to Frank off the left side. Cuts up field. Frank to the 30, drives forward to the 32, a five-yard pickup. It'll be second and five. Casey Hampton makes a tackle. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Wildcat Sports Network. Greg Sharp, Stan Weber, Ed O'Donnell, Greg Akagi, and Mike Ryan back at Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. K-State was second and five from their own 32. I formation behind Beasley. Two wideouts on the pattern of the near side. Jonathan may be checking off. Seven on the play clock. They stay in the eye. Texas dancing around on defense. They run the option. Beasley makes a pitch to Murphy. Frank gets up field 35-40. Murphy to the 45. Murphy to midfield and still angling out of bounds. So mark him out at the Texas 44-yard line. What a run by Frank Murphy. Great pitch by Jonathan Beasley. Great audible by Jonathan Beasley. Texas likes to run a blitz on your tight end side where they bring a strong linebacker and a strong safety. And Beasley read it perfectly. What you want to do is run the option away from it. Run it to the left side. And when you don't have enough players over there, you got to blocker to make a block, and K-State's fullback, John Olazatich, does a great job, and Frank Murphy is on the run. Great audibilization by Jonathan Beasley is the important part of that play. 25-yard pickup for Frank Murphy. The Cats have it at the UT 43. Beasley in a shotgun, two wideouts in the pattern of the near side. Lazatich, the one back in the backfield. K-State in double tights. They snap it back to Beasley. He's going to run off the left side. Cuts up inside, spins down to the 40-yard line. He'll gain three on first down. It'll be second and seven. 325 left third quarter. K-State 15, Texas 14. Jonathan Beasley's doing a nice job of settling in and running the offense. And what K-State is doing a good job of is getting four yards, three yards, five yards on first down. You don't want to take a big negative play. Texas is a defense that tries to create those negative plays, tries to stop that first down run and make it second and 10. But Bill Snyder's done a good job of running many different plays, getting his team a good chance on second down. Second and seven from the UT 40. Staggered set behind Beasley. Two wideouts on the pattern of the near side. Jonathan turns. Rolls the pocket. Looks downfield. Throws the ball downfield. Pass caught by Lockett inside the 30. Shoved out of bounds to the 26-yard line by Greg Brown, the free safety. But it's a cat first down after a 14-yard pickup on the pass from Beasley to Aaron Lockett. This Snyder offense is like a boxer just popping you, popping you, and you think, you know, I can't keep getting these punches from all different directions, but K-State is. This time, K-State rolls the pocket. The quarterback isn't right behind the center. He rolls the pocket. They're again bringing a blitz. It's a Texas philosophy. They have man-to-man, -man, and they run an out pattern to Aaron Lockett for a first down. Beautiful calls and good execution by the K-State offense. They actually mark it at the 27 of UT. First and 10. Twins to the far side. Murphy, the one back in the backfield. Beasley under center. They pitch it back to Frank. Frank's going to cut up against the grain, trying to elude the big rush. Beasley gets a big block for him. Frank still down dancing his way and loses a couple yards. They'll mark him back at the 30. A lot of running for nothing for Frank Murphy that time, but Texas sniffed that play out and they stopped K-State a three yard loss. Lee Jackson made the tackle. Hal Dowden's gonna tell us something. Holding the offense, 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. So now it's first and 20 from the 36. It's a rule change, and you're exactly right, Greg. We didn't have a chance to mention it earlier, and it was only three yards difference. But K-State has a 13-yard penalty. It should never be more than 10 yards from where the ball was snapped if the holding's behind the line of scrimmage. K-State's coaches alertly show the officials and tell them about it and pick up a few yards on it. It's first and 19. Beasley rolls the pocket, throws the ball downfield. Pass caught Lockett at the 20. Aaron to the 15 and run out of bounds inside the 15 at the 12-yard line. Great throw by Beasley to Aaron Lockett, and the Caps pick up the first down and have it at the UT 12, 24-yard gain. Beautiful execution by K-State. Aaron Lockett's one of the fastest players on K-State's football team, and they did a nice job of throwing the out route deep downfield. Texas brought a blitz, but Frank Murphy does an excellent job from the tailback position of giving his quarterback, Beasley, who's rolling out into the blitz, time to throw the football. That great block gave K-State the chance to make the big play. First and 10 from the Horn, 12-yard line. 2-13 left third quarter. Beasley under center. Twins to the near side. Murphy the one back behind him. Jonathan is checking off. He'll shift now to the shot gun and move Murphy to his right side. They snap it back to Jonathan. Holds, looks, fade pattern to the corner, looking for Lockett, and it's too tall. Incomplete, it'll be second down and 10. Irvis Hill on the coverage of Lockett. Well, I was talking about my golfing analogy. Did you hear that, Greg? The putting's good. This is putting right here. 
you got to make the putts to score. K-State needs touchdowns. Great drive. Great drive. Great approach shot for the Wildcats to take the ball down to the 12-yard line. You're on the green. you got to put the ball in. You've got to make seven points. It's a great opportunity for the Wildcats to strangle this game right in their hands. Second and ten from the UT 12. Twins to the near side. Murphy the deep back. Beasley under center. Lock it in motion. They turn, fake the handoff, and they do hand it off to Lockett at the 10, and he's bumped out of bounds at the seven-yard line. They ran that play against Texas A&M in the Big 12 championship game. They do it again where Beasley takes a snap, hands it off to Lockett, who's running right past him. It picks up five yards. Greg Brown bumped him out of bounds. Nice play for the Wildcats. A nice play to keep the Longhorns off balance. If they could have caught him in a blitz, there's a chance he could take it around the corner. But a nice tackle over there by Greg Brown running Lockett down. But now you've got third and five from the seven-yard line after the Lockett run. K-State still in the huddle. 12 in a play clock. They're going to have to hurry. Beasley looks confused. He has to call a timeout. Third and five for K-State at the Longhorn seven. Five wideouts in a pattern. No backs behind Jonathan Beasley on third and five. Beasley now be, may be changing the play again. Jonathan, long count. Seven of those play clocks. They snap it back. Beasley rolls the pocket, eludes the rush. Jonathan looking, looking, gets hit, dragged out at the nine-yard line by Aaron Humphrey, the left defensive end, and K-State will be forced to kick a field goal here on fourth down from the 10. K-State came out with five wide receivers, and I think what they hoped is that Texas would give them that look of no linebackers, and they could run a quarterback draw and see if they could get something. Well, Texas changed up. They lined up one of their defensive backs in the linebacker position right over the center watching for one thing the quarterback draw so Beasley had to check off go to another play he almost turned the corner but a great effort play by Aaron Humphrey a four-year starter pulls him down okay Jamie Ream will attempt a 27-yard field goal Neil Gosh to snap it back snap is down the kick is up the kick by Jamie Ream is good Jamie Ream has nailed four field goals here today and with a minute 18 to go to third quarter Kansas State stretches their lead to four it is 18 14 Wildcats and Jamie Ream kicks his fourth field goal of the day and the Wildcats now lead by four 18 14 Ream's kickoff taken by Victor Ike inside the five of the threes coming up to the 10 of the 20 trying to get to the outside and the Cats swarm him and bring him down to the 28 yard line. So good kick coverage by Kansas State. Texas will take over now at their own 28, down 18, 14, 107 left third quarter. We've talked a lot about Major Applewhite and how good a quarterback he is, but let's hand it to Jonathan Beasley. He took his ball club, backed up at their own nine-yard line, and took a great amount of time off this third quarter clock and drove his ball club all the way down to the 10-yard line to give Jamie Ream an opportunity to kick a field goal. And Jamie Ream's done a nice job. Every field goal has been close and at a hash. That's a harsh angle, yet he's made four for four for the Wildcats. Yeah, he's been impressive. Thank goodness his leg is healthy again. Case eight coming out now. Texas will start with four wide receivers in the pattern. Major Applewhite pointing out things for UT. As the Cats react to the Longhorn package, Major takes a snap, looks right, holds, holds, throws it out in the flat, pass is caught, and for a very short game by Jeremy Jones, who catches it across the 30 at the 32. Jeremetrius Butler makes a tackle, only a pickup of three. It'll be second down and seven. Almost like a running play that time for Texas. Okay, State finally got to Applewhite, but he had enough time to find a receiver. Texas is going no huddle. They're trying to pick up the pace, use the wind while they still have it. K-State, that time dropped back in the zone, only had a four-person rush, and the six defensive backs did a good job of keeping all the receivers up in front of them. They stay with four wideouts. Applewhite in a shotgun on second and seven. Major takes a snap. Looks, throws, ball batted away and nearly picked off. Tipped at the line of scrimmage by Lamar Chapman and Darren Howard nearly had his second interception of the season. But K-State that time shoots off Chapman from the right side and they deflect the pass it's third down and seven here they come K-State runs a zone blitz Darren Howard a defensive end does not rush the quarterback he drops out in the flat like he's a linebacker after Chapman hit the football there was almost a catch by Darren Howard we know he has great hands but he couldn't pull it in setting up this third and long third and seven from the 32 for Texas Apple White under center split backs behind him wide receivers set left and right late third quarter K-State by four Cavill in motion. K-State dancing around the line of scrimmage. Back to throw is Applewhite. Here comes a rush. Throws a little middle pass. Is was it caught? Yes, it was caught by Mike Jones. And it's very close to a first down at the 39. Even if they don't make it, they stop the clock with 15 seconds, which means Texas may get a chance to get their punt team out if they want to and punt with the win. Otherwise, the clock would have ran out. But there's a lot going on right now. The officials say it's a first down by an inch. Texas keeps the football with a throw over the middle of the football field. 
We're going to have to hurry to get the playoff. Two seconds left in the quarter. One, and they do not get the playoff for the end of the third quarter. We have played three exciting quarters of football in Austin, and we have one more left. K-State, after three, leads 18-14 over Texas. And the Wildcats only had 52 yards of offense at halftime. So they had a couple of nice drives in that third quarter. Uh, led to a Jamie Ream field goal. The other touchdown for K-State, a David Allen 74-yard punt return. First and 10, Texas. Applewhite has split backs behind him. Twins to the far side. Back to throw is Applewhite. Sets, has time. Throws the ball downfield. Has a man down there. Nunez makes a catch outside the 15. Throw down and around at the 11-yard line. As he beats Dyshot Carter was Jeremy Jones rather than Nunez who made the catch for UT and Texas and then a long pass play now at the cat 12 yard line 51 yards yeah, and a key he had time to make that long throw ball at the 11 first and 10 staggered set Apple White turns hands off Hodges Mitchell oh no he fakes it out throws it to flat pass is caught at the nine yard eight yard line by Mike Jones I thought they handed it to Mitchell fake me out cats buried him but Applewhite rolled to the near side and hit Jones for a three-yard pickup. Travis Litton made the tackle. It'll be second down and seven with the ball at the eight. Applewhite comes up to the line of scrimmage. Split backs, twins to the far side. Ball in the near hash. Mitchell in motion to the near side. Applewhite back, looks, throws the ball toward the corner of the end zone, and it sails out of bounds incomplete. It'll be third down, and K-State knocked Applewhite to the ground just as he let go to football. Ben Lieber firing through the line and hitting Applewhite. Big third down play now. Yeah, it's become a passing game for Texas. K-State's doing a nice job with pressure, but when you look at this third quarter, Texas ran one play and passed five times on the first possession. On the second possession, two runs and five passes, and on this possession, only five passes, no runs. K-State changing some personnel. John McGraw comes into the game, and Texas calls timeout. Timeout, UT, 13.46 left in the game, facing a huge third down play. Ball between the eight and nine yard line. Third down here. 13.46 left in the game. Apple wide under center, split backs, wide receiver set left and right. Major looks over to K-State defense. Takes a snap, back in the pocket. K-State with a little bit of pressure. Major throws the ball out of the back of the end zone. Incomplete, it's fourth down. And Texas will be forced to settle for three points here and pulled it within one. But that's put a gold star by the K-State defense. They gave up the long pass play, which put Texas in scoring position. But they hold and force Texas to kick for three. Hey, put a gold star by Dyshod Carter. He got beat, but a cornerback, you cannot remember that. You can't even forget it for the rest of the play. He did a nice job after getting beat of running down the wide receiver pulling him down at the 10 yard line which gave the K-State defense a new time to line up and they do a good job three plays Texas's field goal team is on 25 yard attempt for Chris Stockton he is two for three from this range this year the snap down the kick is up the kick is good it's 18 17 K-State's lead is now down to one 13 37 left to go in the game Stockton to kick off from the 35 Murphy Morgan Back deep for Kansas State. It angles to the near side. Short kick. Murphy comes up, makes a catch at the 15. Frank gets to the outside at the 20, 25. Bounces again to the outside of the 30, up the near sideline, and thrown down at about the 34-yard line. But K-State has fairly good field position to start this drive up by a point. 13, 26 left in the game. Beasley, who's quarterback since the second quarter, has an eye formation behind him. Turns, hands it off to David Allen. David does not get much. In fact, I think just got back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. That's only the second carry of the game for David Allen. Staggered set behind Beasley. Twins to the far side. Jonathan back in the pocket. Looks, sets, throws. Pass incomplete intended for Quincy Morgan on the far side. It was Ahmad Brooks on the coverage. Now third and 10 for Kansas State. And that's, you don't want to go three and out here and let Texas get right back on the field with that explosive offense of theirs. Third and 10. Martez Wesley in the pattern to the near side. Twins to the far side. One back, Lazatich with Beasley using a shotgun, takes a snap. Here comes Texas, wide receiver screen to Quincy Morgan. Has some room, Morgan to the 40, to the 45, to midfield, Quincy to the Texas 40 yard line and right down there, Ahmad Brooks makes a tackle, but K-State busts a wide receiver screen for a big gain of 26 yards and a cat first down at the UT 40 yard line. What a beautiful play call because Quincy Morgan was a slot for K-State. Texas guy who was covering him came on a blitz, which means there was no one around the receiver. It was very easy to throw the ball right back underneath and there he's wide open and K-State's offensive line just goes right down the field does a great job of blocking a super call against the Texas Blitz and Quincy Morgan is very good at running with the football after the catch K-State goes in Texas territory again twins to the near side Beasley checking off Murphy's the one back behind him six on the play clock 
Beasley, long count. Runs the option to the far side of the field. Keeps it, fakes a pitch, keeps it himself, goes inside the 35 and drags a defender down to the 32-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup on first down for Jonathan Beasley, who is really running this offense well in the second half. The tackle was made by Aaron Humphrey of UT. It's second and short for the Cats at the Horn 32. Hand it to Jonathan Beasley. He struggled last week, but that is not going to let this guy be affected. He's always been strong-willed and had confidence in himself, and he's done a great job for the Wildcats, especially here in the second half watching what the defense is doing, being very poised, going to the right play, and that time he runs the option play, carries it out. Most of the time he's been pitching. This time the pitch wasn't there. It was the run, and he pushes forward for nine yards. This is an opportunity for K-State to possibly throw if they'd like. K-State's going to have to call a timeout. It was two on the play clock, and they weren't even out of the huddle yet. Greg Sharp, Stan Weber, Ed O'Donnell, Greg Akagi, and Mike Ryan back at Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. Kansas State ran a play to Frank Murphy, and Frank picked up four yards on the play and gets a first down, and he is still down. He looks like he is injured out there, so the trainers are attending to Frank. Jo John Olazetic, the one back behind Beasley. Twins to the near side. Allen's the one on the closest to the sideline. They fake the reverse, hand it off to Lazatich. Didn't fool Texas. They bury him. He'll lose two yards back to the 31. And again, there is Casey Hampton, who that big defensive tackle along with Sean Rogers. We haven't called Rogers' name very much today, but boy, Casey Hampton's been a huge thorn in K State's side. I'll actually say a loss of three. It's second and 13. And Texas has a substitute at the linebacker position. They put in Anthony Hicks. He's a guy who's a starting linebacker, a very good player who had a knee surgery after the Texas Tech game last year. He's just coming back into form, getting some playing time, and he's on the field in this critical situation for Texas. Second and 13, staggered set behind Beasley. Twins to the far side. Texas on a blitz. Beasley rolls the pocket to the far side. Pumps, holds, looks, gets hit, and fumbles the ball. And it's picked up, I believe, by Kansas State. But way back at the 45-yard line, Beasley tried to get rid of the football. David Allen, I think, is the one who saved the day, grabbing the ball for Kansas State. But a huge sack all the way back to the 44 of Texas. Yeah, that was a case where Jonathan Beasley tried to do a little bit too much. He rolled out. He didn't want to throw the football away. He tried to make a big play. Then he got in trouble with the rush. And when he tried to throw and reload, the ball fell out. David Allen did a nice job of jumping on the football. But now K-State is in a third and very, very long. And they just want to avoid a bad play right here. Just well, pick up some yardage yeah. on this play. Well, you want to try to work your way back into field goal range, if nothing else. It's third down at 25 of the ball at the 44. Three in the play clock. Beasley's in a shotgun. Back to throw is Jonathan. Looks, sets, throws the ball downfield. A lock and makes a catch at the 20-yard line. He's a yard short of the first down. He picks up 24 in the play. But now K-State could either go for it on fourth and one, or they are definitely back into field goal range on that throw by Beasley to Aaron Lockett. Wow, this is a tough call for Coach Bill Snyder. He's got one full yard to go on fourth down. He's got a one-point lead at the 20-yard line. But K-State had a great job. They put twins to the left side, and he didn't have anyone run over to the right side of the field from the right. But from the left, Aaron Lockett uses his speed. They had three guys near him, but they weren't fast enough. He caught the football and took it all the way down to the 20-yard line, and K-State looks like they're going to go for it. They are going to go for it on fourth and one from the UT 20. Beasley under center, eye formation, twins to the near side. On fourth and one, or is he going to try to make them jump? Five on the play clock. Texas jumping around. Beasley checking off with two seconds on the play clock. One. Beasley runs the option to the near side. Gets trapped. Goes back the other way. Holds the ball. Gets upfield and goes down to the 33. So Texas not only stops him, but they bring him down to the 13-yard loss, and the Horns will take over at their own 33-yard line. Big play there with 8.40 left in the game, and case it up by a point, 18-17. Texas with the ball at the 33. Got to do a number now on Major with 8.40 left in the game, and Cats up by one. Split backs behind Apple White. Wide receiver set left and right. This has been a terrific football game today here in Austin. Applewhite back in the pocket. K-State coming after him. Hits him as he throws. Picked off. Mark Simino at the 30. Simino down the sidelines. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown. Kansas State gets a defensive touchdown on the INT from Mark Simino. And he races it in. It's his first career touchdown with an interception for Simino. And K-State leads by 7, 24-17. K-State's defense comes out and plays great on this possession. They bring a lot of pressure. 
Applewhite throws the football. Semino does a great job, a lot like the Baylor game, of turning out and intercepting the pass. But that didn't mean he's going to score a touchdown. It was Monty Beisel, the defensive end, who went out and blocked the Texas tackle. When he did that, that opened the way for K-State to have a touchdown. Super job by everybody, including the defensive end on the block. Third interception of the day for Kansas State. That one goes back for six. Jamie Ream to try to add the PAT and put the Cats up by eight. Snap down, kick is up, and the kick is good. It's an eight-point cat lead at 25-17. 31 left to go in the game. And Mark Semino read the coverage perfectly. He read the pattern, was there to make the interception, and a great return for the Wildcats gives the Wildcats a touchdown. The only touchdowns for K-State, interception return and punt return. Ream slips as he kicks the ball. It's a low kick, but it drives out of the back of the end zone. So even though Jamie slipped as he made the approach on his plant foot, he still was able to drive it far enough into the end zone, and Texas will take over at their 20-yard line. First and 10, the horns. Ball to 20, 8, 27 left to the game. K-State 25, Texas 17. Split backs behind Apple White. Wide receiver set left and right. Major under center. Turns back in the pocket. Looks, has time. Throws over the middle. Pass is caught by Hodges Mitchell. Eludes. Travis Litton gets up the sideline and shoved out of bounds by Ben Lieber at the 36-yard line. A 16-yard pass play. That time Litton could not quite grab the speedy Hodges Mitchell after he made the catch. And the Horns have positive yards on first down. Hodges Mitchell is one of the leading receivers coming into the game. He had 15 receptions for Texas. It's a little dump down pass because no one was open. That was not K-State playing soft coverage. That was just a nice run by the speedster Hodges Mitchell. K-State cannot be in a position of just trying to stall out the clock. You still got to win this game. There's eight minutes left. You only lead by eight. So this game is still on the line. A lot of possessions left in this game. Again, split backs. Twins to the far side for Texas on first and ten from their own 36. Applewhite, long count. Back in the pocket. Here come the Cats on the blitz. Applewhite gets free. Simino hits him. The ball's loose. A pile up at the 36. Kansas State says they have the football. No signal yet. Yes, there is. Kansas State's got it. Darren Howard comes out of the bottom of the pile, and the Cats force another turnover. That's the fifth of the day on the Longhorns, and K-State takes over at the Horn 36-yard line, leading 25-17. All-American middle linebacker. He's not a middle linebacker. All-American linebacker Mark Simino's on the blitz, and you know what makes Mark Simino so good? Not only does he get in there, he jumps. He has a great technique of jumping by the running back. He kind of just makes himself small, gets past him, and then he comes in and crashes Major Applewhite, knocking the football away. It's his avoidance of the block, a great skill that led to the sack. Applewhite has committed all five turnovers, two fumbles, three INTs. First and ten cats. Beasley in a shotgun from the horn, 36. Quarterback draw. Jonathan trying to bounce to the outside, lowers his head, gets a yard to the 35. Now the cats want points and run some clock. Eight minutes left in the game. k State up up by eight. If they can get some points here, Stan, they would make it a two-score advantage in this game over Texas. Underline points, Greg. Underline points. The clock's okay, but what K-State is looking for right now is points. You need to get up by more than one score here. You got a great opportunity with football and good field position. We talked about K-State grasping the game when you have the opportunity where their offense has the opportunity because of some great defensive plays. Kansas State second and nine. Ball the horn, 35, staggered set, out on the eye back. They turn and hand it off to David, trying to get to the outside. Allen cuts up field, Allen to the 30, cuts back, 25-20. David, 15, center steps, 10. David stumbling, five-yard line, dies, touchdown! Kansas State, what a run! David Allen, 35-yard touchdown run, and Kansas State leads now 31-17 with 7.20 left in the game. Everyone asks, why do you keep running? You've had no success, zero yards rushing in the first half. You've got to continue to run the football to be successful. Bill Snyder knows it, and he does it all day long. They know that Texas could give up a big play here and there. You don't know when it's going to happen. K-State ran a sweep. They did a great job of blocking the left side. He turned the corner, and then David Allen making like the punt return, broke a few tackles, pushed in from the five, and the Wildcats have that lead that they were looking for. Jamie Ream to try to make it a 15-point cat bulge here in the fourth quarter. Mike Ronzik to hold. The snap is down. Reams' kick is up, and the kick is good. K-State has opened it up now. 32-17 Wildcats, 7.20 left in the game. Yeah, we talked about quarterback switching and needing him. We talked about running back switching and needing him. David Allen steps in for a hurt Frank Murphy and takes his longest run of his career, 32 yards for a touchdown. Jamie Reams' kick is taken by Jones in the end zone. He goes to an E. But finally, the K-State lead is now two scores. Plenty of time against a passing team for Texas to come back, but so far, K-State has done an outstanding job of controlling this passing game. 
First and ten, split backs behind Applewhite, back in the pocket, Seth gets hit, ball comes loose, that's a fumble, the ball's loose, picked up by Kansas State, Monty Beisel has it at the six-yard line, the Wildcats will take over at the Texas six as the Cats again force Applewhite to drop the ball. Darren Howard get his 26 and a half sack of his career. He's moving in on the all-time record. He's within one of Niall Wyron. K-State dropped back in coverage. They only had four guys rush this time. But remember, when you know they're in a passing situation, you can dictate. We talked about that early. This is just a normal pass rush from four guys. But the All-American type, Darren Howard, just crushes the quarterback. And the Wildcats are all over the football. They try to pick it up to run it in for a touchdown. They couldn't pick it up, the three Wildcats. But Beisel picks it up for the Wildcats at the five-yard line. First and goal, they'll actually put it right at the Six staggered set behind Beasley. Now they shift to the eye with Allen dotting the eye. Wide receivers left and right. Texas stunning along the front line. Beasley runs the option. Now pitches to Allen. David gets inside the five. Runs out of bounds at about the three yard line. So it'll be second and goal at the three. 7:03 left. K State 32. Texas 17. And the Cats going for more here in the fourth quarter. What an amazing turn of events in Austin here in the last 15 minutes of this football game, which had been a slugfest until that point. K-State's made the big plays down the stretch, and that's what a championship-type ball club has got to do. The Texas fans are heading to the exits, but K-State's saying, we need another score here. You're still within two touchdowns. Field goal, touchdown, whatever, makes it a three-score ball game, and that's what K-State wants with seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. Second and goal, staggered set, ball on the near hash. Beasley turns, hands it off to David Allen, gets inside and gets slam dunked at the two. It'll be third and goal from the two. K-State's offense cannot be happy about their production from the standpoint of punching it in for seven points in this game. They've had to settle for three a lot in this ball game. But the Wildcats have it now at the two and a chance to go in. Hampton and Rawls make the tackle that time. High formation on third and goal from the two. Beasley back to throw. Fade route to the corner looking for Lockett. Goes up. Ball knocked away and complete. Good defense by Ahmad Brooks on that far side as they shake the ball free and K-State will send the field goal unit on. Jamie Ream already has four. I believe this will be a school record five if he gets it through the uprights here. If he can tow this up and then K-State would be ahead by 18 points. It's just like an extra point. The ball's moved over only about three or four yards from where it would normally be at the three-yard line. So the Wildcats have executed this play hundreds and hundreds of times, but you need to do everything right to get this field goal through again. Basically an extra point here. Snap down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 35-17 Wildcats, 6-14 left. Kansas State has outscored Texas in the second half, 26-3. Reams kickoff headed to the end zone. Jones is going to come out. East of the 10 to the 15 to the 20 and knock down about the 19 yard line as Andy Clocky was in there on the tackle for the Wildcats along with Dyshot Carter. These cats have really exploded Stan in half number two. Credit the offense, credit the defense, credit the special teams. It has been a total team effort here in the second half on the road in Austin, Texas. You do have to credit everyone. You really have to credit this coaching staff. K-State came out playing pressure defense, doing a lot of things today. It's all been successful. Credit Bill Snyder for taking an offense that's been sluggish and making something happen. And credit David Allen and that great punt return team for turning the ball game around on a 74-yard punt return. First and 10 for the 19 for Texas. Applewhite back, throws it out in the flat, passes caught by the tight end Jones, and he's pulled down at the 27-yard line by Lamar Chapman. Lamar has played a heck of a game for K-State. It's an eight-yard pickup of the play. It'll be second down and two. 5.50 left in the game. K-State 35, Texas 17. Second and two. Ball to 27. Split backs and now move Hodges, Mitchell in motion. Twins to the near side. Applewhite back in the pocket. Pump fakes. Looking long, trying to get Hodges, Mitchell lined up on Cooper, and they sail the ball over the heads of both players incomplete. It'll be third and two. And my goodness, am I hearing boo birds from the Texas fans? No, it's or Coop. 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 Oh, it's because the K-State fans are the only ones you can hear right yeah, now. They're yelling Coop for Cooper. I'm thinking, boy, they can't be booing Major Apple. Well, there were, there's 80, 82,000 here, 76,000 or so Texas fans, which that means there's about 38,000 of them left right now, and there's still 6,000 K-State fans who are making yep. a lot of noise. Yep. K-State, this would be the biggest, this would be the most people to ever watch the Wildcats win a game if K-State can hang on here in the last 520. Applewhite rolls the pocket to the near side, throws the ball, batted down at the line of scrimmage. It was Lamar Chapman who got a hand on it again. Boy, Chapman has just done some terrific things, and Mac Brown's going to punt. Sends the punt team on here in fourth down and two with 517 left, and K-State in front, 
Well, they've got quarterback Major Applewhite shaking his head, and they've got him on the roll. That's what you want, Major Applewhite. You don't want him back in the pocket. Texas is having to roll him out, and he has trouble throwing over guys when he's rolling out. He's not very tall. K-State knocks the football down, and their punt return team is back on the field. Ryan Long to punt it. David Allen back at the 37. They snap it back to Long. Kicks it away, angles it away from Allen, and it's going to sail out of bounds. And that's not a good kick. It's going to walk, walk way up. That's what Bill Steiner talked about, Stan, in his Tuesday press conference. He said, why don't more teams just kick away? And Bill said it's a small margin between a kick down the field and one that goes off the side of your foot and only goes a few yards. Well, they'll mark it actually at the 41 of Kansas State. Beasley under center, an eye formation behind him, wide receivers left and right. Texas dancing around again. Beasley runs the option, keeps it himself, steps inside, gets to the 45, drives forward, and leans to the 48, a seven-yard pickup on the play. Everick Rawls makes a tackle. How about Jonathan Beasley's performance today stand in this game? He's done a great job, especially when you factor in what he had last week. He got pulled in a ball game. He saw the other quarterback, Adam Helm, come in and get all the praise. Everyone around K-State saying, you know, Adam Helm, Adam Helm. But he kept his head up. He was the first guy out there to – Congratulate Adam Helm. He said, maybe I'll be back out here substituting for you sometime. All we care about is K-State's football team. And we have David Allen in the backfield. He's not the starting running back either. K-State has some depth, and the nation is finding out, even without Michael Bishop, this football team is good. High formation behind Beasley on second down and three. Option to the far side. Beasley cuts it back up inside, gets hit pretty good, and goes down to the 48 of Texas. This will be close to a first down for the Wildcats. Jonathan made a nice read as he cut back against the grain that time and gets positive yardage. It was Cedric Woodard and DeAndre Lewis on the tackle for Texas. They say it's enough for a cat first down. That is their 15th of the game. Look who the eye back is. Frank Murphy back out there for K-State. The eye behind John Elazitich. First and 10. They hand it off to Murphy. Frank doesn't get a lot. Dies 4 to the 46 again at 2. It'll be 2nd and 8. 350 left in this football game. Kansas State 35. Texas 17. Texas has two timeouts left. They burned one of them earlier in the half. So they only have two timeouts left. And they may start using them here in a little bit. But right now, you've got a demoralized Texas defense out there, and there have been some injuries. This team's playing their sixth game. They came into the game beat up, and now they've had a couple other injuries. This time, it's uh, their middle linebacker, DeAndre their Lewis. stud, DeAndre Lewis, who's limping off the field. K-State was second and eight, and Texas has a brutal schedule coming up. They play Oklahoma and Dallas next week. Then get a week off. They'll need that. And then Nebraska is here in Austin. K-State fumbles the snap. And there's a pile up at the 48-yard line, a bad exchange between Cummins and Beasley. No signal yet, but I think Kansas State and Beasley gets it back. 3.05 left to go in the game. Beasley did recover. K-State trying to hang on to this 18-point lead here in Austin. Third down and nine for the Cats with the ball at the 47 of UT. Beasley turns, hands it off to David Allen, bounces to the outside, cuts back up inside, and drives forward to the 44, a gain of about three. It'll be fourth down in case it'll be forced to punt with 2.20 left in the game. Lee Jackson made the tackle for Texas. What an effort today by the Wildcats. There has been a timeout called by UT. Stop the clock with 2.13 left. One thing to talk about was the heat, and for some reason, you know, when your head like this, it seems to all go away. K-State has weathered this very well. This is their first heat ball game they've really had this season, and they have weathered the storm magnificently. Well, you're right, Greg. Those first two home games were at night, and there were a lot of clouds, and it really was only about 70 degrees, and it was not that hot in Ames. High snap. Ronsick gets it and kicks it away. Good high, boomy kick. That's going to sail into the end zone. So that's a 44-yard punt. Only a 24-yard net because the ball will come out to the 20-yard line. Greg Sharp, Stan Weber, Ed O'Donnell, Greg Akagi, and Mike Ryan back at Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. K-State 35, Texas 17. 2.06 left to go in this football game. Kansas a winner today, 27-9 over SMU. The Jayhawks will be in Manhattan next week for a 1-10 kickoff. Missouri in the fourth quarter. Putman on Memphis, 27-10. Notre Dame came from behind to beat Oklahoma, 34-30, the Sooners' first loss of the season. Applewhite in a shotgun, takes a snap. The Cats still coming after him. Applewhite throws it out. The flat pass is caught by Hodges Mitchell. There's a flag on the play. It's going to be holding on Texas. Mitchell goes down. It's actually a five-yard loss. K-State may take the play. Just say we'll take the five-yard loss and make it second down. The holding, though, was way back in, inside the 10-yard line and pretty obvious. Yeah, they will decline it, so it's second down and 15. Lamar Chapman did a great job of coming inside, and 
Let's hand it to the defensive backfield and the depth that K-State has there. There's been players playing today that haven't been asked to play the type of downs that they have today. Deron Tyler's been in there all game long. John McGraw, K-State really played to their strength, the defensive backfield depth and the defensive line depth. Darren Howard's playing defensive tackle right now to show that type of depth. Second and 15. Apple White in a shotgun takes a snap, loses the football and gets tackled at the five. They were trying to run the wide receiver screen. Apple White had it slip out of his hands and he's brought down at the five yard line. And now it's going to be third down and 25 for Texas. And it's been a tough afternoon for Major Apple White, the sophomore signal caller for UT. Well, going into the ball game, we talked about stopping the run, making an all-out passing game. Force Major Applewhite to throw when you know he's going to throw. And even though he puts up a lot of yards in the ball game, 269 yards, it's K-State who really created things out here, who's done a great job of dictating to Texas what's going to happen when they drop back and pass. Well, they did shut off the Texas running game and force them into a one dimensional team. Four wide outs in the pattern on third and 25. Cooper on a blitz coming to the near side. Hits Apple White as he throws. Pass is caught at about the seven yard line. Carter throws the man to the ground. A two yard pickup as Kwame Cavill made the catch but it's fourth down and a long long way to go. 23 yards and Texas We'll send the punt team on with 55 seconds left in the game. Let's go to Greg Akagi. Yeah, one note, uh, defensive end Monty Beisel on the previous play before that was shaking his right hand. He was in some pain. He played that down, but he was in some pain. Looked like he was flipping his right hand or his right thumb. That might have been a little play, uh, pain on the previous play before the third down. 38 seconds left. Ryan Long to punt. Allen back near midfield. Kansas State is 30 seconds away from a huge, huge road to win today in Austin. They snap it back to Long. He gets it away under heavy rush. It's going to sail to Allen at the K-State 49. He calls a fair catch there. And K-State will have to go to a knee one time. And this game will be over. You know Kansas State stand has won 16 straight conference games. It's going to be 17 here in just a little bit. But what a game by Kansas State today here in Austin, Texas. This is a giant win. This is a giant win. People said, you know, when's the K-State season going to start? Well, you play every game you know you could possibly be beat when you play a team, even at Iowa State. But today, the coaching staff, the players, everyone stuck together in a hostile environment. And the Wildcats are going to get out of here with a victory. Beasley goes to an E, and that is going to end this game. K-State has won 17 straight conference road games. It's worth repeating, 17 straight conference road games. And the Wildcats are now going to be 4-0 in the year and 2-0 in league play and two road wins nonetheless and now it's back to KSU Stadium for the next two weeks at home the final in Austin today oh does it sound good K-State 35 Texas 17 